All right, hey everybody, it's Jason, and I'm just getting everything set up now, just uh, tweaking a couple things, uh, trying out this uh, Mob Crush restreaming, multi-streaming thing, so it's going out to hopefully Facebook and uh, Twitch, as well as YouTube, all at the same time, and it's supposed to just kind of consolidate all the chats and all that good stuff so that uh, I can uh, monitor everything a little bit easier than through my Nginx restream server, so... Uh, we're giving this a go tonight. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it's all good and you guys can hear me okay. And, uh, yeah, we'll be able to uh, get going here momentarily uh, after I just get everything finalized. It's been a while since I streamed, so I'm a little bit in uh, disarray, if you will, because I got off work today and said, you know what, I'm going to go home and stream tonight because I haven't done it in a while. And I think uh, everyone's going to be excited because I'm going to show off this easy mod install. So hang out. Wait for a few minutes, enjoy the background music, and uh, I'm going to finish getting things set up here. What's going on, everybody? Hey, it's Jason, and uh, we're going to go ahead and stream tonight. I'm very excited uh, to be with you guys. It's been a hot minute since I streamed, and we're trying out some new things. We've got some background music going, and uh, we've got some stuff that we're going to build, so uh, it should be pretty good. Hopefully, we can uh, answer some questions and, and do some cool stuff today. I already see a few uh, questions in the chat, uh, one specifically about the HRAP 4 Easy Mod. Uh, we don't have one of those yet. I've actually had one in the design queue for a while. Uh, the problem is I just didn't like the way it was uh, coming together because it's just that fight stick doesn't have a lot of room to work inside um, to make it really easy like I like to make the easy mods. Um, I'm not going to say I'm not going to continue to work at it, but right now it's kind of on the back burner. So, yeah. Um, 
Anyways, uh, so what are we going to do tonight? Well, you guys know that uh, um, I've launched the TE Easy Mod for pre-order, and uh, it's I've got the actual PCBs here, and the wiring is being finished up right now, so it's probably going to ship within the next week or so, which is great. So definitely check out the website, jasonscustoms.com, and pre-order it if you've got one of the sticks that it'll work with, and you want to put a Brook Universal Fight Board in there pretty easy, because... It's a pretty sweet setup, and it's pretty easy um, to install, which I'm going to show you guys tonight. Um, we do offer is just the Easy Mod, uh, so you can get just the Easy Mod if you already have a Brook Universal Fight Board, and you can pick it up with a Brook Universal Fight Board as well in a kit form. You're going to save a ton of money if you do it that way, so that's how I recommend you pick it up uh, and support the Brook guys as well as the stuff that we do here, because the more you buy, the more we can reinvest in new Easy Mods and stuff like that. Uh, so that's where we're at right now. Um, what are we going to do tonight? Okay, so uh, I've got a couple of options, and uh, let me show you what we got. So I've got uh, this TES minus, which you can't see. Let me put uh, this here, like so. Um, I've got this TES minus here that we could do. Uh, a uh, build-in which is an option um, but I don't think we're gonna do that uh, let's see I've got this versus stick that we could do it in uh, it's got the Street Fighter Cross Tekken artwork in it but um, this case is a little it's a little beat up uh, I picked this up used here in Japan uh, this is an option we might do it with this one uh, but you know, I've also got this TES Plus that we could do it on, so I'm not sure if we want to do it on this one because, well, I don't think I want to do it on this one because I think I'm going to use this one for a different project. And let's see. I've got another one down there. I just don't want to fish it out. So uh, I, we also have one more, and I think this is the one we're going to do it on. Well, let's see. Well, actually, I'll show you this. This was a testing one that I did. Uh, just to kind of make sure everything worked. I forget what kind of stick this came out of. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is not the one. This was just a test. So, yeah, this is... I'm going to actually leave this out and very easily accessible because this is one of the different home pads that uh, you can use uh, with this Easy Mod kit. And the difference between this and, let's say this one here if you look at the two uh, they're pretty much the same except this one has player LEDs up here at the top this one doesn't it's just got these LEDs over here uh, so with the way you set up the easy mod you can pick your style basically and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that so we'll set that off to the side okay uh, so I've also got some VS sticks in the other room but I think we're gonna we're gonna do this instead and let me show you guys this one is a versus SH that I actually picked up in Akihabara this weekend. I went up and met Unlucky. Uh, well, excuse me. Unlucky came down here to Yokosuka. We met up and hung out. And then uh, the next day I was building the Southpaw hitbox that you guys probably saw on Twitch and Facebook as well as, uh, or not Twitch, I'm sorry, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. It was a custom build that I did, and when I sat down to build it, I realized I didn't have enough black buttons. So uh, on Sunday, I had to take a quick trip up to Akihabara. It's about an hour and a half away from where I live here in Yokosuka, and uh, buy some buttons. Mac Japan was very upset that I bought all their black buttons, but I needed them fast, and they had a good deal on them. So I picked them all up, came back, and built it. While I was up there, though, I always stop at a couple places. Uh, I typically don't like to buy fight sticks in Akihabara because the prices are too high, but I found this one at a uh, uh, one of the shops. The price was good, so I picked it up. I have not opened this yet, so we are going to do this together. All right. <clears throat> so uh, this isn't sealed, so I'm not breaking the seal on something that's like super rare or anything like that. It's just they rewrap everything at these stores to protect them and make them look new, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but they were very concerned that I knew that this was a PlayStation 3 stick and not a PlayStation 4 stick when I bought it, so I thought that was kind of funny. So let's go ahead and open this up. And uh, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and shoot it in the Twitch chat. I'm, that's why I'm over here looking, just to make sure I can 
answer the, uh, anything that comes up. <sighs> uh, I may have some of these versus sticks used for sale here soon. Um, I've got a few of them. And I don't need that many. <laughs> also, Gummo, I know uh, he's got some new ones for sale. I think he's selling for like 180 or something. Maybe one, I, I don't know. He's selling for a lot. Uh, a lot more than I paid for my use ones. Cool. And the stickers are still intact here, so let me go ahead and put these off. My razor blade. Cool. And here we go. Alright, now this is an SH, this should be the quiet one. Okay. Yep. Now the SH series has the quiet buttons in it and the silent joystick, so hopefully, well we're going to definitely replace the buttons and maybe the joystick will be good. Now check this out, it comes with all the stickers still and the inserts, that's pretty nice. And it has the bag, that's the one good thing about the Japanese, they are very good about uh, keeping things, so that's pretty good. Yeah, mini series Panzer. Let me tell you, that thing was a kind of a big pain in the butt to uh, to build in, uh, just because it was so small. Um, but I might be open to making more of them. Uh, that was a left-handed one. I'd probably go with the normal right-handed one. Um, and I definitely like the way that case worked. It was nice being able to just open up one panel, and get in from the bottom. So that was kind of kind of cool. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so this is the first time that I've opened this box, as you guys saw, and just kind of looking at it. This is kind of the general condition you're going to get used fight sticks in. Um, the buttons, I mean, the lever's quiet, you know, it's it's okay. Um, just kind of looking at the general condition of the stick, uh, you definitely show sign of wear. Um, you can see, like, right around the, uh, the dust washer, you can see the scraping from the dust washer and, you know, just a lot of scratches and scrapes on the stick in general. The bottom is one of the more telling things usually. Sometimes I've gotten some sticks here in Japan where there's surface rust on it and that's no good. Um, but this one looks pretty good so I'm not too worried about that so that's kind of cool. Um, yeah this one uh, is going to need a little bit more work long term to get up nice. Maybe some Novus plastic polish to clean this up on the top. But I still think this is going to be a good candidate today. So yeah. <clears throat> uh, all right so okay so what are we going to do with this like i said earlier we are going to put the te easy mod in this because we can uh so first things first to use the easy mod you're going to need one of these sticks uh or one of the tes's that i've shown off already uh so fortunately we got that we're going to set that off to the side here just kind of off, off camera well i guess maybe still on camera i don't know uh, okay, and you're going to need the Easy Mod kit. All right, when you order the Easy Mod kit, you're going to get this PCB, this little guy, and then you're going to get a series of wires that are designed to hook all of this up. There you go. Uh, what basic overview is going to be, um, you take this and you replace the PCB over here uh, with this one. This is the way that faces up. And you're going to hook all your wires up to this and route them over to the brook board, which I've got here, also available as part of the kit. You save a bunch of money, actually, when you put them together, so that's going to kind of be nice. Um, and these are all pre-soldered, ready to go, so no soldering is required in this kit. Uh, okay, now this little board, uh, what is this for? Well, I think, and maybe not in this one, but I know, and probably in this one, and a lot of these fight sticks, they've soldered the USB cable to this PCB, so you, you gotta cut that off. People don't wanna solder, I don't want you to have to solder, so we've created this little adapter board so that you can just take the USB cable, use plug it into the screw terminals here, and then use this adapter cable to plug in here, and then use the type B plug on the brook board and hook it all up. Easy day. Okay. Um, Okay, a question up there, how long does it take to design and engineer the PCBs for the Easy Mod? It depends. 
the Obsidian one took me like six months because I was deployed at the time and I ended up having to replace a major important PCB in that fight stick. Um, and it took me like six different iterations of that board to get right. So it was very expensive both time and design wise as well as manufacturing time to get it right before we put it uh, out for purchase. Um, these, anytime that you have to replace an existing PCB, getting everything lined up just right to use these dome buttons and these slide switches takes a lot of time. Um, so uh, fortunately for me, I saved a lot of time on this one because I bought this design from TP Retro Mods. Um, he actually was one of the, he was the first guy to make an easy mod type thing for these fight sticks. Um, then someone else came out with one and so he just kind of like, well, I don't really want to compete with anyone so I'm not going to sell these anymore. He sold the first batch and uh, I was like, hey man, let's work together. So he and I worked out a deal, I bought the design from him, I made some modifications for it to make it even easier to install. So that one didn't take nearly as long, I think I did two prototypes on this before I went to production on it just to make sure everything was good to go. Um, so you know that still took time. I think we started working on this in uh, uh, March and now it's almost July. So that's kind of the timeline that you're looking at to get it done. <clears throat> so okay. Uh, Alright, now, so we talked about this. Alright, so in your Easy Mod kit, this is what you get. Now, there's a bundle available. You're going to get the Brook Fight Board with it, the Universal Fight Board, and uh, I've only got six here because that's all I'm going to need, but uh, it, it's also going to come with uh, these sticky PCB feet, and now I have six. Uh, for this whole kit, I think it's like a hundred and seven something dollars. Uh, this is a ninety dollar board. So, that's a great, great deal. $90 board, you know, $35 easy mod kit, plus like $4 worth of PCB feet for just under $110. Not bad. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, now, the reason this is able to work with a variety of fight sticks is because of this jumper here. Um, and I don't know that you're going to be able to see that on camera, so let me see if I can get it closer for you here. Hopefully it focuses. I don't know. Let's see. Give me a minute. Yeah. All right, here we go. All right, so you see here this little jumper guy here. Uh, these are already made up, meaning uh, they're both connected. So you're going to actually have to cut one based on the fight stick that you're going to use. Um, See if I can get that more in focus for you guys. Uh, and we're going to cover that now. And that's all going to be dependent on the LEDs and the situation uh, of the LEDs for the fight stick you're using. Because what these do is they, they provide the power to one, they actually provide power to both sets of LEDs out of the box. So you got to scrape the jumper off based on which fight stick you're going to use. We're going to cover that in this video. So if. Uh, let me see here. If um, you've got this style where it's just these eight LEDs here and nothing above the home button, well for that you end up scraping uh, SJ2 on their label, SJ2 and SJ3. Uh, so you scrape that off and that allows you just to power these LEDs. Um, if you've got one like this where you've got the LEDs above the home button, um, this is uh, the PlayStation button here. If you've got this one and you want to light these up for your player indications, then you're going to scrape SJ3. And to do that, you're just going to use a little X-Acto knife like this. You can go in and just scrape that little trace uh, so it doesn't make a connection. And voila, you've got this set up right. You only have to scrape one of them. So again, if you've got this style with just the eight LEDs here and nothing above the little home button, then you scrape SJ2. If you've got this style where it's got the four buttons above the PS button, then you scrape SJ3. So we're going to scrape SJ3 for this one. And we're going to do that in a few minutes. So before we do that, let's talk about tools that you're going to need uh, to do this. 
All right, like I said, you're gonna to want to use an X-Acto knife like this. You can use a flathead screwdriver if you're careful, no problems, uh, pretty easy day. You're gonna want a screwdriver. I like my little electric one that I just picked up. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna need some Allen keys to get these screws out, uh, pretty common. This is an expensive set. You can get a real cheap set for like a couple bucks. Uh, optional, I'm gonna use my flush cutters and I am going to need a small Phillips or small flathead screwdriver to undo the screw terminals on both the USB adapter as well as on the Brook fight board. Uh, wire strippers, always a good tool to have. Uh, this is just another screwdriver I've got. And zip ties, you can never have enough zip ties. Always have a bunch of those on hand when you're modding a fight stick. So, okay, let's go ahead and set all this stuff to the side, get all the tools out so that we can open up the thing and get inside. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is I'm not just going to upgrade this fight stick with the new universal fight board. I'm actually going to put in a set of these silent sa or these mechanical uh, Sam Duxa um, SDB SBD 202s. Uh, these are dark high, just like what's in here, so that's going to be nice. And uh, I really like them. And I've also got a traditional JLF makes some clicky clacks because I'm not a fan. Well. I'm not going to say I'm not a fan of the Silent Lovers, but I like the Clicky Clack better. And I may upgrade that to a JLF uh, with the Auto Kit in the future, but for tonight, I'm going to leave it with just the stock, uh, the stock lever. So, all right, let's go ahead and move all this off. Okay, uh, and well, I guess the other thing too is I'm going to replace these two buttons up here with some new OBSFs because why not? Yeah. Uh, I also want the 24 mil uh, buttons in from Sam Duxa. I might have to fly to Korea to convince him to do it, which fortunately is just a couple hours away. Uh, am I fluent uh, in Japanese? Uh, no. I am, no. Not anywhere close. Uh, most days I work 14 hours a day. By the time I get home, I'm extremely tired, answering questions for Jason's Customs, sending out whatever I have here to ship out, talking to Arcade Shock, talking, talking to Radius X, um, and then just kind of trying to relax. So uh, I have not spent a lot of time learning Japanese, which is unfortunate. It's very difficult, especially growing up in Southern Florida, where I learned Spanish, and then living in Italy for a few years, where I picked up a little Italian. The Romantic languages kind of stuck with me, and the Asian languages, not so much. So, no. Okay, but enough of that, let's get started here. Uh, let's go ahead and open up the top panel here first, and I think it's this blue one. Perfect. But yes, I am in Yokosuka, conveniently where the video game Shinmu actually uh, takes place. And that battleship in the game is really right next to the Navy base. It's at a park. <clears throat> and if the uh, the audio for me is too low or the background music is too high, let me know so I can tweak it. This is the first time I'm doing it. <clears throat> All right. Cool. So I got those out. Now this top panel should lift right off, and of course it does. And there's a crap whack of wires. Okay, this is going to be, this is the interesting thing. And by interesting thing, I mean this is just something that you deal with with Japanese sticks when, uh, when uh, you buy them used. You'll notice this one, the uh, purple for kick three is not plugged in. And there's just a lot of crap underneath the uh, panel here on the plastic. So we're going to need to clean all of that off before we reassemble the stick. Uh, but before I do that, I want to label or take a, make a diagram of all these wires so that I know how to come back up later. And maybe I can create a graphic for the website for the easy mod stuff. All right, let's see. Nope. All right. I got a pen. Now we just got to find some paper. I know. We'll just use a shipping envelope. <laughs> all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to just label all these punch one, punch two, punch three, punch four, K1, K2, K3, and K4. 
Okay, and then we'll do start and select. All right, so let's see. Select is white. Okay, gray is start. All right, and so it looks like black is punch one, red is punch two, green is punch three, yellow is four. All right, K1 is going to be brown, then orange, purple, and blue. All right, cool. So take this legend and set this aside. Uh, okay, so I've worked with a lot of fight sticks uh, doing mods and stuff like that. So question in the chat. Uh, looks like from YouTube is how does the build quality of the Mad Cacts versus sticks compare to the Obsidians, Fighting Edges, and Dragons? Um, how can I say this politically without getting in any trouble? I'm probably not going to be able to. Uh, this is all plastic. Um, the panel is metal, and the bottom panel's metal, but the rest of this stick is all plastic. I don't really like all plastic fight sticks. <laughs> um, that being said, it's it's not cheap plastic. It's nice and thick and it feels sturdy, so that's good. Um, as far as like the fighting edge is concerned, there's a lot of plastic on that fight stick too. It's pretty light, uh, but the build quality is decent. It's pretty decent. Uh, Horror usually makes a pretty good stick. Um, the Obsidian is also a pretty good stick overall. Uh, I don't like the metal um, stuff on the side because they've had issues with the LED shorting out and it causing the metal sides to shock players, um, which is interesting gripe that I have because I make all metal fight sticks, but I haven't had any of mine shock anyone yet because I don't run any power stuff to the case, so I'm not sure how or why it's doing that. But um, the Obsidian, in general, is a decent quality build. Um, I don't like the Dragon. I think it's too big. There's a lot of plastic on it. I think uh, that's going to be a hard fight stick to maintain long term for a life if you want to keep it, unless it's just sitting on the shelf. So, um, For me, personally, with my fight sticks, the question is, do you prefer your aluminum or steel? I like the steel. Um, I've got three of them on my shelf right here to the right, plus another one upstairs. Uh, and the Panzer II. Uh, I like the heaviness of it um, because I am, I guess I'm just a bigger guy, so I like it to, you know, I like to feel something heavy. Um, this is, to give you an example, this is my wedding band and it weighs probably, I can probably measure it, but it's heavier than most because it's made out of platinum and it's real thick. And I personally like that because I like to be able to feel the weight. Um, and until I got rid, well, until I got my Apple Watch, my normal chronograph was probably <laughs> almost a pound. It was really heavy. So me, personally, I like the weight of the steel panzers. So, and that's, it's just all personal preference. If I had to schlep it around on my back all the time for tournaments, I might rather have a uh, aluminum one, though. All right, so let's go ahead and just disconnect everything in here because we need some access. All right, and I think these have the fancy release clips. All right. There we go. If these aren't coming off, it's because they some of them have these little release clips that you need the uh, flathead screwdriver to press. Um, sometimes they come off fine, so like those. And that's just a, a function of age. Now, if you want to have a little bit more working room while you're doing this, you can clip the zip tie down here and that'll help. So, all right, so there you go. Got the panel off, not so bad. We're gonna set this off to the side because we're gonna come back to this and rehab it. <clears throat> all right. Cool. Um, and now you can kind of get a better feel just for how kind of gross and dirty this is in here. Um, I think I'm going to need a microfiber cloth and uh, some Windex or something. So give me one second and I'll return momentarily.
<laughs> Alright. I didn't find my Windex. That's unfortunate. I used it the other day, but I did find some microfiber cloths and some kitchen cleaner. I'm probably not going to use this though. I had it in this room. I just don't know where I put it. <sighs> Alright, well, anyways. Hmm. That's disappointing. So, normally what I would do is I'd spray some Windex on the cloth here, and I'd just go through and clean this whole thing up. Um, it's pretty common when you buy used fight sticks that one of the first things you're going to want to do is get in there and clean it. Um, because it's got someone else's dead skin and all that junk and grime in there. Um, and you're going to want to just get rid of all that. I'm, this not having Windex is going to drive me nuts. Weird, weird, weird. Uh, well, I guess we're going to use some fantastic uh, scrubbing bubbles for the kitchen. We'll see what happens. It'll be fine. If it's not... Anyways. Yeah, this is fine. Um, okay, cool. So, yeah, the T2 Plus, uh, like this one, that one was a good one. Um, but all the ones I've ever messed with, the, the top doesn't end up sitting flush over time, like you said, and that's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, and it just kind of creaks and moves. That's kind of one of the reasons why I like my fight sticks, and that's why I think a lot of builders have followed suit and started making their own versions of the Panzer, um, or clones of it, if you will. So, uh, it's just metals, of, uh, it's just better. It's great. All right. Cool, so we got that cleaned up, and one of the first things I'm noticing here is you can't get this panel out from the top, unlike the other ones. So like this one right here, it would be sitting there and you'd have two screws, so you gotta pop that out. So this is probably gonna be a little bit more complex of a mod um, because of this fight stick, but I think we're gonna be able to make this all work. Uh, one of the things that you can see down here is like this, here's the USB cable, this was that JLF connector. Um, here's all the wires and whatnot. So let's go ahead and flip this upside down and get to it from the bottom and uh, see how we can do this. I think this one will be too big. Yeah. So we'll just have to use the one that's on here. This one will probably be too small. Watch. All right, we'll just take the feet off. Oops, there we go. Uh, you know, so I get a question about the Samduxa 24s a lot. Um, I am actually gonna just fly to Korea and talk to them direct about it because I think it's one of those, they don't, un it's not that they don't understand the market, it's just, it's a risk. And I think I'm just going to have to lay a fat stack of cash down and say, let's make these. And I'm probably going to need some help with that. So I'm probably going to have to enlist the help of some of my partners. <laughs> All right. Well, this says I'm going to avoid the warranty if I go behind the sticker. I don't think Mad Cats is ever going to support the stick, so I'm, I'm okay with this. I don't know what these screws do, but I'm taking them off too. The last time I actually worked on one of these was uh, at Evo 2016. I had to replace these two buttons for somebody because they failed on them. And uh, it was a pain in the butt. Because it, it was difficult to get in there and work and totally forgot until I opened this up today. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah. Hey, check this out. Violet, Violet, not Violent, Mountain Dew. It's grape, Japan only. It's delicious and weird at the same time. Okay. This should pop out now. There we go. Yeah. You can kind of see all that dust and grime kind of fall out, so we might as well 
hit this up with a little cleaning agent. All right. This will be uh, good later because we're going to have to find a place to stick all these random PCBs like the brickboard and the adapter. All right. I don't know, I'm focused on the bottom. I can clean that once it's back on the stick, but that's good enough for the inside, so we'll set that down here. Got a little Huntsman spider jumping around down there, that's good. And uh, looking inside here, we can see that, uh, you know, there's just some more gunk and crap in here that we're gonna have to clean out. Yeah, all right. And it looks like we're gonna have to take out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten screws. And that's going to help us get this whole bottom plate off, which should give us access to more stuff. So let's do that. Thank God for this screwdriver. You can just kind of hear it go when you pull it apart. Yikes. Uh, the Huntsman spiders, they're really tiny here. And um, they actually kill other bugs, so we just kind of let them do their thing. And my cats like to play with them. So I hope this thing here, I hope that's a piece of plastic and not a piece of skin. Because that would be really gross. And if you guys have worked on one of these versus uh, sticks before and I'm doing this wrong, well, I'm learning because uh, this is the first time I've ever really had to work on this particular fight stick. So you know what's probably going to happen. I'm going to try and stick this damn board in there and it's not going to work. And then we're going to be screwed and I'm going to have to start over. Or I'm just going to cut some plastic. Oh, all right. Two more. Nice, and that just pops out pretty easy. Nice, nice. Oh, cool. And you know what? This is going to work out well. I'm already seeing that this is going to be fine. So this right here, uh, yeah, this is disgusting. If I had a dishwasher, I'd probably throw it in the dishwasher and wash it because um, it's so gross. But uh, I don't, so I'm going to just have to clean up my hand here. And I'm just wiping it down. I've got some residual fantastic from... Uh, yeah, the other cleaning I did, so I don't need it to be super sopping wet. We don't need that many scrubbing bubbles here. <clears throat> the good thing is, is, now that we're doing this on the, the most complex of the fight sticks, I think uh, this is going to be one of those, you know, hey, if you can do it on this, you can do it on anything type of things. Um, and then that's all good. All right. So we've got that all clean. Good to go. Clean enough at least. We'll set this off to the side. All right. Now, uh, looking inside here, you can see this is the board that plugs all of the, the buttons into kind of a central hub. And then these two gray flat cables, they go up to the PCB here. So we're going to need to get into that PCB. And we're going to need to get into here because, uh, one, we're going to want to use these and connect those to the brickboard and then two we are going to need to get in here to replace the PCB so let's try and do that now um, looks like it's uh, one screw here and one screw over here and of course in standard fashion they put some Loctite or some like uh, you know anti-tamper junk into the screws heads let me see if I can get in there with just the screwdriver and get it to come out Totally worked. Easy. Cool. Gross. I'm going to set that off to the side. Do the same thing with this one. All right. Dunzo. Cool. And then this whole thing lifts off. That is your cable door with your USB cable inside. And it's got a zip tie holding it in place. I don't want that there, so I'm going to just nip it like that and 
take that off. So good. So now we have a little bit more wiggle room. We can put another zip tie there later if we want to, uh, but for now we don't. Um, we're going to disconnect, <coughs> excuse me, the JLF connector here. We're probably going to need to, well, not probably, we are going to have to cut this end off uh, and plug it into our uh, brook board. But one thing I am noticing, and I don't know that if it's just these or if it's all of them, uh, this doesn't use the right JLF connector. This is kind of something they ham, ham sandwiched, <laughs> ham handed into place to work so they could save money. Because if you look, it's two JST PH type connectors. Well, the problem with that is this, the JLF, let me see, let me grab this one over here. The JLF, this is not a PH style connector. This is an NH connector, and it makes up with an SHF, Sierra Hotel Foxtrot connector. Now, yeah, pin for pin, it works, because it's the right spacing, but it doesn't clip or lock into place. So what did they do? They used glue to hold it in. Bad form, bad form. We're not gonna do that. I'm actually gonna just go find a random JLF cable and use that instead. If you find yourself in a situ similar situation, um, see if you can find a spare JLF cable because this is kind of garbage and I'm not happy about this. <clears throat> All right. Oh, uh, retro gaming, si retro gaming systems collector collectioneer is in here. So, uh, yeah, I, I see your question there. Panzer Dragoon three hitbox featuring Brooks ultimate fighting board and Brooks retro board, all cables. You can, you can, uh, do that right on my website, throw it all into a, into a shopping cart and find out exactly how much it's going to be. Um, the only thing is we don't do artwork right now unless we're doing a, a printed plexi thing, which we're going to probably start another run up here shortly because the last order just finally got shipped out today um, to all the customers because we finally got it done. Uh, so, you know, just you put all that into your shopping cart and then factor in 70 bucks for a printed plexi and that'll be what it would cost. Okay, now back to it. Um, Here's a couple things that we're gonna to need to do. We're not gonna reuse this board. We know that. Uh, these wires here coming in, uh, they're glued down, of course. Why wouldn't they be? Let's go ahead and peel these up. Now, the good thing is, I'm gonna turn my hat backwards here so I, hopefully my big noggin and the, the Cebu Lions hat doesn't block anything. You'll see that everything down here is labeled. So like, this one here is ground L2, R2, circle X, L1, and this is R1, triangle, square, select, start, and I don't know what that top one is, but it's, let's see, I can't tell. Maybe I'm gonna have to completely remove this. Um, but in any case, they're kind of labeled for you already. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a map uh, for these as well, so we don't have to come back and figure it out later. Uh, with our multimeter because the idea is I don't want to have to use any special tools for this for you guys so we're going to of course they wouldn't label this one uh, we're gonna call this one the top one one two yeah one two three four five six three four five six and this top one we don't know we're gonna start at the bottom so that's R1 and then triangle square select Start and then we'll take that screw off to see if we can get the other one. Um, now the bottom one, this one's kind of nice because we got a red line. Uh, we'll go out red line. Okay, and then we got L1, X, O, R2, L2, and ground. Cool. So if we take our handy PlayStation controller here. And we see what these all end up doing, because I can't remember. You know, I got too much stuff going on up here all the time. So we know square is going to be punch one. We know triangle is punch two. And then R1 is punch three. Uh, L1 is, um, that should be triple punch. Uh, X is going to be kick one. Circle will be kick two. L L2 will be kick three. And we know what ground is, right? That's just ground. So if I had to guess, I bet you this one we don't know, I bet you that's going to be L2. Oh, wait, 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 no, no, no. 
R2 is, oh, see, I messed this up. R1 is punch three. R2 is kick three. So I bet you this is L, L2 up here. No? Hold on. Now I've got myself psyched out. L2, that is weird. Okay, so that's actually kick, kick, kick. Ooh, I don't like writing that. Uh, okay, so L1, X, circle, R2, L2, ground, so that's punch, punch, punch. Uh, kick one, kick two, kick... Th kick one, kick two, kick three. And then triple kick. Um, so I bet you this. Well, I guess we're just gonna have to take the screw off. I can't even think about it right now. <sighs> okay, so we got that written down. Now I'm just kind of confused. Let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight buttons. Oh, well, that's right. And then we got a ground, and then we got two uh, start and select. That's everything. Cool. Set that off to the side. Now, here's what I'm going to do, though. And I'm going to recommend this trick to you guys, too, if you find yourself in a similar situation. Grab a Sharpie. And hopefully I have one. Um, I did have one. random crap in here I can't find it uh, okay well imagine that this pen is a sharpie and uh, on the this this other wire that doesn't have any uh, connectors or any symbols mark it with blue lines or something so you know uh, which one's which because you're gonna need that later to make this map make sense <clears throat> okay so before we, we're going to have to clip these off, which is easy, uh, but we're going to want to take the PCB out first. So let's do that. Okay. Now we're taking out the surround the bezel part. Cool. Now we can just kind of lift this whole thing out. And once we lift that out, we can carefully just, uh, there's these little tabs here, just kind of flick them back and pull up on the PCB and it'll just kind of come out. There we go. And then voila, be careful not to dump all these switches and random bits out of uh, your board here, or your surround, because that would be a terrible cleanup. Uh, okay, so now we got this out, and you can see here we got some dome switches and all that good stuff um, that we're going to need to salvage, because we're going to need to use them on the new PCB. So you can pull them out very gently, because if you rip these legs off, they're a uh, it's a nightmare. So you just gotta pull them out very gently, kind of squeeze them as you pull them, and that way they'll they'll dis disengage from the uh, the holes. Unfortunately, I made the mistake the first time I worked on one of these with my T2. I ripped a leg off. I had to buy a whole new stick because I couldn't find these little domes. It was terrible. Okay, so we got that off, and when we we look closer, guess what? There's more freaking hot glue here. What a pain. Let's try and peel some of this off. Okay, now if you wanted to and you were so inclined, you don't have to do this, but you could hit these uh, solder points with a soldering iron and pull the wires out. We're just gonna use our flush cutters like this. And uh, now that we got the glue out of the way, we're gonna cut these wires off the board as close as possible so that we have the most wire to work with here. And uh, that was pretty easy. Looks pretty good. You don't have to worry about knowing which color is which. I've already labeled that on the USB board for you. Um, okay, now we're looking here. 
and we've got this all set up. Um, I still don't know what this top one's for. Maybe it's nothing. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing with these gray wires here. And you can see why you wanna use a Sharpie. Um, I've already kind of smudged off most of the ink that I put on this gray. So we're just gonna have to go with it. All right, and look at that. One of the wires already broke, so this is gonna be easy. So we're gonna just go ahead and again, flush cut all these off as close to the board as possible and do that here. You can do this with scissors. You're just gonna not be able to get as close. All right, and that's the stock board. We don't need it anymore. Now, one thing I'm gonna point out that we're gonna to have to deal with, and I'm gonna show you how to do this easily, is look at these switches. This bottom switch down here, the nub on it is a lot shorter than the one that comes on the easy build board, uh, or the easy mod board, excuse me. So you're gonna actually need to trim the easy mod down a little bit, otherwise it's not gonna fit in place. It's not hard, you can do it with flush cuts, you can do it with nail clippers, it doesn't matter. Don't cut it all the way down. You wanna leave it so it's about the same length as the one on the stock board. So I'm gonna do that now, and uh, hopefully I get it right on the first try. All right, so it looks like it's about three millimeters. So I'm just gonna come down here. I'm gonna look, get it close. It's always better to cut it long so you can trim it later. Get it close, boom, and done. And we look, and yeah, we almost got that perfect, so that'll be good. It doesn't have to be exact, but it's it's good to get close. All right. <clears throat> okay, so good, we got that done. Uh, let's go ahead and set it off to the side. Now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna put these rubber dome switches in place. So the one for the home button, super easy. It's already there, you just kind of line it up and uh, the holes, whoops, line it up in the holes like so, and like so, and then just grab it from the back if uh, you can, and just kind of pull it through, and it's gonna hold it in place, very easy. Boom, easy day. Now, uh, for this one, because we've got the, uh, the LEDs up here, we're gonna wanna use the bottom set of holes. The top set of holes are if the the buttons in the top position, i.e. you don't have these LEDs here. So we're just gonna put these like so. Get them lined up. And whoops. Like so. Hold it in place and just pull the little nubs from the back to lock it down. And if you need to, you can use pliers, needle nose to do this. Just be real careful. All right, cool. So there you go. Done and done. Now those little uh, uh, those little uh, contact switches are going to make contact and you'll be good to go. So that's awesome. Uh, so now we've only got one more thing we need to do to prep this board. Uh, but we're going to do it after we put it in the PCB into this holder because we have to scrape the, uh, scrape the uh, jumper. And like I said, it's going to be, we're gonna scrape jumper SJ3, the one on the right for this stick. And uh, it's just easier once it's in the PCB holder. So let's go ahead and get this lined up. Put your switches in the same general sp position on the left. It'll make lining up these uh, little guys a little bit easier. Uh, so what you're gonna do is just kind of line it up. Just kind of drop it in place. Uh, Actually, you know what? We're gonna do this. We are going to put these little guys on the switches first. It'll just make life a little bit easier. Hopefully they stay put. So when we flip this over, actually, problems. These things are filthy. Let's not put something dirty back in our fight stick. Let's clean them. So we're just get our little rag out here and just clean the years of dust and grime off these little uh, plastic nubs. Uh, it'll go a long way. There's one, so we can just stick this back on, like so. And then where to put the other one? Here's the other one. I'll just clean that up too. 
Again, this is just a microfiber cloth. It's got a little uh, cleaning solution on it. In my case, it was fantastic. I recommend Windex. It's a little bit better. All right. So that's pretty good. Cool. Done. All right, so that looks a lot better. So now we can get that in. And uh, we could probably... The inside of it's actually pretty good here. Uh, if I was being super meticulous tonight, what I would do is I would pull all these things out and I would just, you know, super in-depth clean all this stuff. But I'm just being gentle uh, not to disturb any of the LED lenses that are in there and trying to get just some of the big chunk, you know, big chunkies out uh, that we don't want to see in there. A little bit of canned air could go a long way if you're real gentle with it too. So, you know, just things to keep in mind. So now that we've got this all lined up, or uh, kind of prepped, we're gonna go ahead and just tilt it in. Damn it. That's what I was afraid of. So we're gonna, I think we're gonna have to leave that one in place actually, because uh, it doesn't fit super tight like the other one. We'll just tilt this in like this, and then press down. And then one of the things you're kind of having to worry about is making sure these switches all line up so they function and you can hear them clicking. So that's good. And then uh, now we're just pushing the board down into place like so and voila, we're good to go. You can feel in here all the tactiles making contact and whatnot. So that's good. And uh, yeah, it's a good, it's a good feel right there. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, put the PCB screws back in to hold that into place. And that was the ones that had all this red Loctite on it. Whoops. Red Loctite makes everything complicated. There we go. Don't over tighten. You don't want to break the board. I will know if you did it. Trust me, I've done it plenty of times myself. Okay. Two more. Cool. And one more. We should be good to go. Get that lined up. Boom, there you go, done. Easy, easy mod's done, right? Lock all the mode switches, so that's good. You can feel those buttons, super nice, super nice. So, that's done. That was probably the hardest part. In this case, it was getting to all this that was kind of a challenge, so that was cool. Uh, we got to see it in its fullest. Lame. Uh, so now, right now, I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. I don't wanna see all this finger dust and uh, human human debris on my fight stick later. Okay. Easy. Nice, nice. And we got some more glue there. Gross. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and put this back into place. Let's clean up the area that it goes back into because we don't wanna leave any dust in there if we don't have to. Might as well take advantage of this whole setup while we can because it's not easy taking this thing apart. There's a lot of screws, so let's uh, not leave any dust behind if we don't have to. All right. Ugh, gross. Super gross. <clears throat> All right, and now can we just line this back up like so? Look at that, fits in like a glove. Grab these two little black screws that we took out earlier and put this in. Done. And one more. Done. All right, cool. Easy, easy, easy. Let me see, what we got in chat? I have four Panzers. Four? Nothing, I got 22 of them. Although they're all for sale, so I guess I don't have 22. I've got one, two, three, I got four right now here. Maybe I got another one upstairs too that I haven't built out. <laughs> it's quite possible. All right. 
Ugh. <laughs> Gross. These things are so nasty on the inside. Okay. So that easy mod is put back into its place. Hoo-yah. Uh, we got the USB cable here ready to go to uh, be put into the USB little guy. And I'm going to cut this because I don't want to see that. I need access to these wires. I want all these to be nice and loose and free so that I can trim them and uh, use them in the brick board because we're going to actually cut these, uh, strip them, and then plug them into the screw terminals on the brick board. Uh, I chose not to include a 20 pin header. Uh, I didn't want to have a bunch of specialty brick boards required to make this work. Um, while I'm not opposed to it, it just didn't make a lot of sense. And I figured you guys would appreciate that too if you already had brick boards that you wanted to be able to toss in to your easy mod modded TE. Um, but first, before we get into that, now is a perfect opportunity to replace these two buttons because this is the easiest it's going to be to get to them uh, with everything apart. So let me just go ahead and pop these off. Eh. Come on. There we go. And there we go. Done. Toss that up there. <clears throat> All right, that one's being a pain. Come on, where's my flathead? Nope. Just trying to find this release. They sometimes want to be a pain and not move, and that's what we're experiencing right now. So I am just going to do the brute force method if I can find my brute force method. Oh, right in front of my face. There we go. Goodness gracious. All right, I'm gonna take that button out and toss this off to the side too, because that's also a gross button. <clears throat> and we'll clean this off. All right, now, one of the things that we're gonna have to figure out before we get too far into this is which one of these wires is ground and which one of these is a signal. And the reason I say that is because we wanna be able to lock these with the easy mod installed, right? So, to do that, what I did is I included, let me see if I can't find the wire here. Uh, which I should be able to. Ah, oh, perfect. Here it is. This wire. This comes with the kit, and you'll see it's got this little blue uh, wire that's stripped on one end. I think I stripped that during testing. And then it's got these little quick disconnects here, and guess what? Perfect. These actually connect these two buttons to the lock mechanism on the Easy Mod board. So you can actually, when you put that lock switch in lock, It'll actually lock those buttons too, which is a kind of nice little feature here. So that's good. Um, but in order to properly use that, we need to know which wire is which so that we can take one, take the two grounds that we're not using and tie them back and then uh, um, connect them to the new buttons. So yeah, let's grab our new buttons though while we're here. Let's go ahead and stick those in. We're just gonna keep it stock. And I'm using just the gray or the white sand was here because I really like sand wall buttons. Always have. All right, cool. Oh, now we're gonna set this off to the side up here because it's actually, actually disconnected, so we don't need to worry about it right now. Uh, and then we got all these wires here. We got these that we're gonna hook up. These gotta go back to the buttons eventually. So set those up like that. And to, to kind of figure out which one is which, we're gonna take the two screws off here. Don't worry, I'll document this, so you are not gonna to have to do this when you do your upgrade, if you do this upgrade on this white stick. Uh-oh. Uh that one's not gonna work. Let me grab a different one. Uh, okay, you got a question in chat. Keep up the good stuff. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Hitbox Panzer, little <laughs> Hitbox Panzer, they're coming back today. I gotta add the stock in. I got a notification that they all got verified. 
Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, they were in stock earlier this week, or this weekend, because we got five in, we shipped out two, so we should have three, and they should be in SoCal. Should be able to pick up your order now. Um, let's see, other question. If I chose, is the auto mod with the JLO something you would do on top of building the Panzer? Uh, unfortunately, no. Um, there's a reason for that. I have all the auto mods here in Japan. I ship those out from here using USPS or Japan Post. All the fight sticks and stuff are in the US and they get built out there so um, it's just difficult to make that logistically work now that being said I do have still a stash of JLFs here uh, that are new that's actually where I picked up the one that I'm gonna use in this today uh, I am gonna bring back the auto build it yourself thing um, on the website that I had taken down uh, now that we've upgraded so we will be able to do that so then you should be able to just do kind of a one-for-one -one swap that's pretty easy okay uh, now we had to get a different Phillips screwdriver because these screws are really tiny and we got to get in there and hopefully get these out without destroying them it looks like I don't want to say these were opened once before but you can tell that the age has not done well to some of this hardware so I gotta try and get it without stripping it unfortunately this one's kind of stripped so we're gonna have to use a flathead screwdriver and just kind of muscle it out and it's just not a great it's not great to do that all right this is like the worst part about working on old fight sticks that someone has already modded before or may not you know the, the hardware just got some moisture in it or something and it's uh, yeah. maybe a different Phillips head will work I don't know I'm worried that I'm gonna make it worse yeah that's not working never give up Just gotta find the right small flathead now to hopefully get this out. Because I don't have any easy outs. And I would venture to say most of you don't either. And if you do, I'm jealous. That ain't gonna work. Oh wait. No, nope, that ain't working. That's making it worse. That's not gonna work. cross people oh, man that is kind of a mofo right there let me tell you what The worst part is I can't get at it with a pair of pliers yet because I can't get the screw head up far enough to grab. That's going to be a pain. All right, so we're just going to have to try and make this work. And I don't think... such a crappy spot to be in oh yep yep there we go dig hard enough in and you'll make it come out oh my god yikes that screw is trashed goodness gracious that is not going to be good we don't think we're going to be able to reuse that one Whew. okay now we can take this off though it's a fancy cover that we don't need. Um, that's all good. 
All right, so now we're looking here and we're seeing how all these wires are set up inside. And one of the, I will give Mad Cat some credit on this. I do like how they made these little jump wires to make everything super easy to plug in. I think I like the way they did it later in the TE2s where it's like a, uh, um, like a, it's an RA style connector where you plug it in and it's just done. But, um, and it's all just clips, which is kind of nice. Uh, Cause this, can fail over time. I, I think people have seen it fail. Uh, I you know so the question the question in the chat was is Mad Cat's ever going to make another fight stick? I don't know. I guess we're going to have to see. Uh, they might. They're, they've been hitting at something. You know they did get bought out. It's not the same Mad Cat's team, so I don't know what their uh, their thoughts are, but they seem to be focused on a lot of gaming peripherals like mice and keyboards right now. Um, okay, so now what we need to do is figure out which row, either the top or the bottom, is ground. So to do that, what we're going to do, we're going to try this. We're going to take the two bottom wires. I doubt it's, we're not going to get this on the first try, are we? We're going to take the two bottom wires like this, link them up with our multimeter, and they don't make a connection, so let's try the top two. Yeah. All right, so top two are connected. That means they should all be connected to the ground. So let's just try um, another wire here to see. And... Oh, see? All right, so that's... That's not making connection, and I suspect that's because these are connected to the special lock ground uh, controlled by the, the board, which is fine. Not a big deal, because um, if we go, let's just take this one, and oh, this one. I bet you these two are connected, because this should be common ground, a common ground circuit board. Um, the stock one should be, at least. Let's see if we can't just make this work. Yeah. Okay. So as we suspected, top uh, looks like that's ground across the board, the common ground, the lock grounds. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to disconnect this one. Whoops. We're going to disconnect these here. Like so. Because we're not going to need these. We've got the lock built in to the easy mod. And let's just do a quick verification. Whoops, go to the beep mode. Beep. Cool. So, good, we took off the right ones. Now we won't be confused with having two gray wires and two white wires. We know the gray is the signal, the white is the signal for their respective buttons. We're good to go there. Now, as far as the switches and stuff are concerned for the buttons, doesn't matter. You're making a moment, moment contact here. When you do this, it's just connecting these two pins. Switch those around all day, you're fine. It doesn't matter. So, not a big deal. But now we've got to bolt this back into place. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we do have this fancy schmancy little guy here, which goes on like so. I guess we should put this back on. Um, you know what? We're not going to. There's a reason. I want to have a little bit more leeway in my wires. So we're not going to put it back on. And we're not going to use that screw. I really don't want to use either of these screws because they're so bad, but we got to at least hold it in place. So we'll put one over here like this. Just screw this back down. Nice and tight. And that one is not in. There is no screw there. So I think what we'll do I hope this doesn't come back to bite me in the ass later. <sighs> I'm gonna use a little dab of super glue. Uh, usually not a great idea to use a super glue on a fight stick, uh, but we wanna hold that in place. So, and this is brand new. So let's just do a little, just a smidge, just a little, 
Let's see if we can't lift this up. Oops, that's a little bit more than a smidge. That's all right, push that down and it should be good to go. All right. Uh, okay, Facebook chat, can you demonstrate how quiet the Sam Ducks a button is? Uh, sure, I'll put this, Sam Ducks are right next to the, to the uh, microphone. There you go, that's what it sounds like. I mean, the harder you hit it, obviously you're slamming plastic into plastic. That doesn't change, but so. All right, cool, our little super glue trick worked. So that's good. Um, cool. Nice, all right, so now what we're gonna do, now we gotta start putting everything back together. That's kind of the end of this easy mod, it's pretty easy. Uh, okay. Uh, VLX Diamond. No, you will never find one at Mac Japan. Uh, it took me a long time to find mine, and, uh, I ended up spending a good amount of money for it. It's my second one, so now I've got two. The one I have back in the States, which is in storage, the door's broken off, but this one is in perfect condition. It took me forever. Um, I have never seen any classic fight sticks like this at Mac Japan. Just the way it is. Okay, uh, cool. Let's go ahead and get back uh, to work now, huh? What we can do is we can start making up all the connections to the, the fight board net or the easy mod right now because we're gonna want um, that done before we put the stick back together. Uh, so first and foremost, this blue with the two blacks. Uh, it's got the quick disconnects on the two blacks plus the bare or the ended blue, that's gonna be your home button uh, with your two locks. So we're gonna hook that into this three pin connector here and let's go ahead and just run these two lock grounds over to our switches and plug them in like so. Yeah, there we go, into place. And we're gonna do the same with the second one here. All right. Done. Okay, now uh, we got to hook up the gray and the white wire. We know start is gray, so as we look here, we know this one is gray. The one on the left is we're looking at it as uh, the stick is uh, facing down. So we're going to plug that in like so. Donezo. And then white, it's the only one left. We're going to plug that in to the select button here and call that good. Voila. Now we have some extra wire here, so it'll behoove us once we kind of get this all back into place uh, to use some zip ties to hold that down. I don't want to do it quite yet because I still got to deal with this and put it down. I'd rather get that in place and then deal with that second. Uh, okay, next things that we got to deal with, okay? This four pin connector here, this is your DP left stick, right stick mode. Um, you've got this wire here. Uh, this is the interconnect. You got red, two blacks, and a green. So we look here, and if uh, we got uh, the two middle will be black, left stick can be uh, green, the right stick can be red, or I'm sorry, the right stick can be green, uh, the left stick can be red. So as we're looking at it like this, we know that we want this side to go down. So green, black, black, and red, and here's why. Port and starboard, left and right, red and green, navy guy. <laughs> All right, uh, okay, now the next wire that we're gonna have to hook up, we got this little four pin guy. This is where it gets tricky. You get two wires in this kit. This wire turns your home button, or excuse me, turns your turbo button into your touchpad click. The other wire turns it into a turbo button. It's up to you what you want to use. I don't want to use turbo. I want to have a touchpad click. So I am going to use this one. Now, here's the kicker. It's got two sides and they're different. This one's got a white and black connected, or not connected, I'm sorry, right next to each other. And this one's white and black separated by some space. Now, you're looking at the uh, top side of this and it's gonna go here. So it goes VCC, turbo LED, TV key and ground. Um, 
We care about turbo key and ground, so we are going to use the white and black connected like this. And the reason is, when we connect the other end, we're not connecting it to the turbo key on the brickboard. We're going to connect it to the touchpad connector. And the touchpad connector, let me pull this out, uh, this one is the touchpad connector. And unfortunately, the the pH connector is blocking it, so let me set that down. I'm going to grab the manual and show you uh, why this is important. Okay. So as we look here, this has got a nice demonstration and layout of the board. Hopefully you guys can see that on camera okay. Uh, here's your touchpad key and your ground. You can see touchpads on the far left as we're looking at it and grounds on the far right. Conveniently, when we take this wire and we're going to plug that into this board, the white goes to TP key and the black goes to ground. So that's why this side needs to go this way. It's very important you don't gum this up because if you do, you're not going to have some. You're going to have something that doesn't work. So, uh, yeah, just kind of a quick tip right there. And we're going to just plug that in like so. All right. So we're starting to have a nice little bundle of wires here. All right. Next thing that we got is going to be not this wire. What's this wire for? Oh, this is the wire. <laughs> This is the wire here if you're going to use your touchpad, or I'm sorry, your turbo key, because this is going to connect your LED for turbo as well as your ground, your power for LED, and um, your turbo key itself up to the brook board. So if you're going to use turbo key, you use the four pin connector like this that's all wired up together. Uh, the ends on either side shouldn't mind, it's just a straight pass through cable. And then if you're going to use it as a touchpad click, you use the one with only two wires. We're not using this, so we're going to set that off to the side. Okay. Next board or next cable that we're going to install is this one. This is for all the player LEDs. Uh, plug one side in here, one side to the brook board. Uh, it really doesn't matter which one goes to which. Um, I like to have the red on VCC, so I'm plugging that there just to as a just a quick, easy way to tell that I'm plugging the way I want to plug it in and plug that down. So now we are good to go. So now we can start thinking about cable management and how we're going to tidy up all these wires because we've got lots of options. We can run them up here like this, you know, do something crazy. It's all going to be dependent on where we want to put our universal fight board when we kind of put this all together. I'm not going to do any crazy cable management right now because we're not there yet. What we do need to do now uh, before we start putting things back together, we need access to that jumper that I told you earlier we were going to scrape. So this that we've already talked about, we scraped um, Sierra Juliet 2 because of the the way the LEDs are set up. The LEDs on this fight stick are different. We have some LEDs up here. So we need to scrape Sierra Juliet 3 in our case. Sierra Juliet 3. So what we're going to do, and let me see if I can't zoom in real close. We'll see if that's going to work. That's blurry as hell, isn't it? All right. That's the wrong way. That's too much. All right. Hopefully... You guys can see that, but it looks, <clears throat> excuse me, it looks like it's dark. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna illuminate this a little bit. All right, is that good? Yeah, that's good. All right, so we wanna scrape SJ3. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our X-Acto knife. We're gonna find that little trace. And we're just gonna scrape it. Not go too far, just scrape it so that it's not making a connection anymore. The alternative was, the way this used to be, is you had to put a blob of solder in. Well, you guys don't want to solder, and I don't want to make you solder. Alright. That should be good. Let's test it with our multimeter. That's going to be the quickest way to tell. If it's good, we're moving on. If it's not, we're going to scrape some more. All right, it's not good yet. Too much. We're not there. We haven't gone far enough down. So we're going to continue scraping. I'm not going to put my phone up there anymore. I need to concentrate. I need two hands. One is a concentrating hand. One is the working hand.
All right, let's try that now. Should be good. Ah, still not there. So close. All right. All right, let's try that. Victory! Nice. All right. Now, worst case scenario, you don't get this right, you're just going to have a bunch of LEDs lit up that you can't see. But you don't want to you don't want to do that. You don't want to overpower and blow something in the uh, on the brick board. So make sure you get it. Uh, and if you have a multimeter, just check it. It's easy. All right. Uh, I'm the king of uh, VLX info. I want to make my own hitbox style panel for the VLX, but don't know what to use as a panel. Any recommendations? Yeah, don't make one. Just order one from me. I sell them already, man. <laughs> Save yourself a bunch of time and money. It's super expensive to prototype that out. I already got them made. They're great. All right, so we're good there. Now we can cut, uh, start putting things back together. All right. I am gonna clean this door off because this thing is disgusting. All right. Cool. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we got that all cleaned up and you can see kind of all the scratches here and holy crap, I'm still zoomed way in. You guys are way more forgiving than I am. I'd be like screaming right now. All right, so we know that this is gonna fit right back in. Wait, which way, like this? Yeah, just like this, okay? And look at that, that USB cable, it just fits perfectly, that is fantastic. Now, what we're gonna do while we have this is uh, loose. Well, I guess we, we've got plenty of time, so let's go ahead and get this in place. Oh, look at that. That's perfect. It fits wonderfully. Money! Cool, cool, cool. Alright, so we got that in. Let's grab our screws here. We got this one. Where's the other one? I guess these were all the same if I think about it. Uh, we know these were held in with Loctite. These got the red crap on them, like Loctite. So, let's go ahead and screw this back into place. Cool. Whoops. Yoink. Okay, cool. We're not going too far. We don't want to strip these things. It's very easy to go a little too far with these little electric screwdrivers. Even these that are charged with USB power cords and have little tiny batteries in them and not a lot of torque. So just be careful. Hold it with a loose grip and then it'll just kind of spin in your hand when it gets too high or too hard. All right, I'm just trying to get some of this Loctite out because this is disgusting, uh, and it's whoops, and it was making it difficult for me to screw this back in. Uh, so we're just going to try and peel some of this out to make this easier, and then hopefully we're going to be on our way to calling this done. Yuck. Yeah, these are so gross. I hate old Loctite. It's nasty. Oh, I'm just making it worse. So terrible. Gross. Do I have just a hand screwdriver? I think I'm gonna just have to use the hand screwdriver to get this back in, just because I'm worried that I'm gonna go too far with the electric. And I'm so disorganized. Where's my screwdriver? Ah, there we go. Found it. Cool. Get it lined up. Two screws, that's all this is. Two screws holds this entire assembly in, and we're done, just like that. Fantastic. All right, let me move my phone out of the way. Oh, let's turn that light off, too. All right. Coolness. So, now we've got this back in. Uh, I, that's kind of what I wanted to make sure, is we had plenty of room here to uh, get these wires up out of the way. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get these nice and nice and uptight. We're gonna take them, we're gonna put them on this side of the pole, we're gonna move this up like this, 
And we're gonna zip tie those nice and tight up together with the signal wires using our little tiny zip ties here. So let's do this and uh, go like that. Perfect, look at that. You wouldn't even know. You wouldn't even know. Look how nice and tight we got that up against there. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Cool. And, you know, we've got these wires here. So let's go ahead and, you know what, we're here. Let's just make them all look nice and neat and get them all cleaned up. We'll just use some zip ties. We're going to hold them all together. Zip ties are cheap and they make your wiring look so good if you do it right. Now, if you do 100 zip ties on two lengths of wire, yeah, it'll look like crap. But some well-placed zip ties is going to just make everything look super pro super pro and that's what we want we want it to look super nice like it's stock better than stock even all right so there you go we got that hooked up we've got these wires over here we can start thinking about zip tying these together you know what let's do that now we're not going to zip tie all of them together we want to get uh, just the trunk of them started like so <clears throat> because they're all going to the same place and the brook board's not that big. So let's just do this. Yes, just like that. Oh, that looks great. Super nice, people, super nice. That's what we're going for, super clean, super nice. All right, just like that. All right, cool. We're gonna leave some slack. We don't wanna zip tie them all together yet because we still wanna have some room to work with our brook board when we know exactly where we want to put it on the bottom panel. We're not going to do that quite yet. So look at that. Nice and clean. Super nice. We could do this. Right? We could run these wires up like this and look how much room we got. We still have a lot of room. We're probably going to mount the brook board on this side, but to be safe, we're not going to mount these. We're not going to do that quite yet. We're going to leave these wires loose. Okay. Now, we're uh, we're back into assembly mode still. We're doing the right thing. We're moving down track. It's good to go. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and hook up the USB little connector guy. That's this little dude. This guy makes it so you don't have to solder. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our wire strippers here. We're gonna straighten these wires out like so. We're just gonna, with our fingers, just like that. Nice and straight. We got <clears throat> five wires here. A couple grounds, a shield. Excuse me, a ground and a shield. We got a VCC, which is red, that's power. We got this green uh, data, this white data line, differential pair, good to go. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and just pull this little guy off too. It's gonna give us lots of extra room. And that's what we want. And uh, Jesse, hey, thanks. Uh, I, I agree, it is nice and tight. <laughs> okay, these are super amazing. I love these, love, love, love these wire strippers, but sometimes they're not the right ones for the job. And if you don't do a lot of wire stripping, you don't need a $45 or $50 pair like I've got. Sometimes you just need the cheapy guys. And I have a pair, here you go. Just something like this. They're like two or $3. They're super cheap. Uh, but the problem is, is sometimes they don't come in uh, the small enough size. So get the appropriate ones you need. These aren't very expensive. You can get them at Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace Hardware, all those good places. Um, or random random electronic shops, fries, micro center, etc. But I'm gonna use these. These are automatic. They self kind of set their right depth and all that good stuff. Now we don't need to trim a lot, so we're just gonna take a little bit off here. Boom. Not enough. A little bit more. Okay, that's pretty good. You don't want any of these wires. Whoops. You don't want any of these wires exposed once you put them in those screw terminals. And we're gonna talk about those screw terminals because everyone messes these up. And they always think their easy mod's broken when it's just they don't have them plugged in all the way. Okay, good. Good, good. We got power. We got ground. I'm going to set those off to the side like that. We'll get this data line like this. Maybe a little bit more. Cool. Same thing with the green wire here. Cool. And then one more. One more black wire, right? This is gonna be the ground or the shield. Take that off. Just a little bit. Okay, great. Now, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna use this guy. Uh, question, something similar for the Kwamba Dragon. 
No, Quama Dragon, it is not a good stick to mod. I will not do anything for that thing, I'm sorry. Um, the way they have it set up, those crazy hinges, having to pinch wires in and out, I just, that's a recipe for disaster. Not gonna do it. Sorry. All right, now back to this, getting this thing done. Okay, so these little guys here, you always wanna make sure they're fully backed out. Use your little flathead screwdriver. You can get in there, twist them all the way out. You're gonna see the little elevator go down to the floor. That's gonna be ready to take your wires. You gotta do this. It may look like they're open, but I promise you they're not. You gotta watch them physically open. All right, because they are always shut. Very, very easy to miss. All right. Cool, we got that done. Now, on this little board, it's labeled B, B, G, W, R. That's black, black, green, white, red. Match the wires up to the screw terminals. That's it, super easy. Barely an inconvenience. All right, so to do this, we're gonna go ahead and get these wires kind of all straightened out and twisted. We're just doing it with our fingers. It doesn't have to be fancy. You don't need to solder these or anything like that. The screw terminals, they're gonna do their job. Trust me on this. All right, get those wires all nice and clean we're gonna go ahead and start with the blacks because they go right next to each other and that's uh, as I'm looking at it far right here if you push these in like so and you see any wire you need to trim a little bit of it off just a smidge and that's what I'm doing right now you don't want to take all of it off but you want to make sure that all your wire is going in that screw terminal and you're not going to have a short between uh, two terminals in this case, the two blacks, if they shorted together, it's not a big deal. I already do that on the circuit board, but we're building good habits here, people. Good habits for modding. All right, so we get them in. We're holding it in with our right, our left hand here. We're screwing down these screw terminals until you feel the friction. Then you go just a little bit more, and that's going to be in. All right. And you do the tug test. Does that come out? See, that one's coming out. The one on the right's coming out. That means we don't have this tightened all the way down or the elevator wasn't down. So let's go ahead and loosen this thing up. Let's pull this wire out. Easy, that means it wasn't done. Let's go ahead and loosen that, that thing, that screw again. All right, we should be good. Let's push that back in, put that thing in the elevator and hit the up button. That's turning that screw right. Turn that thing right, you feel it getting tight again. Grab it, make sure that's tight, tight, tight. Guess what? Now we do the tug test. Each wire. One, two, boom! Done. Nice and tight. You want that with your fight stick wires, especially your data and your, your USB cable. Because if that thing disconnects mid-match, you're going to be super pissed. I would be. Alright, so next wire up is green. I can already tell that wire is going to be a little too long, so I'm going to trip some, trim some of it down. Trim some of that exposed wire down. <clears throat> Stick that into the hole like so all right easy in there nice and tight we'll grab our little flathead screwdriver hold that in place and just tighten down we're gonna pinch that wire in place easy already done do a little tug test it's in there you don't have to worry about it cool all right next one white we didn't strip it as much off so that one's gonna be good to go I don't think I'm gonna have to trim that down at all <clears throat> all right we get that guy in there and we tighten this down if when you're all done you plug this in and you see uh, too many USB devices or something like that guess what that means you've got something mixed up on this USB cable guaranteed and the only place you can mess this up is right here at these screw terminals everything else is a nice simple plug all right now we got the red wire in for VCC. That's what powers everything off this USB cable. Hold that in place. Tighten that sun gun down like this. Boom. And we're gonna do that tug test. Every single wire, do it twice. Just to make sure that you didn't miss anything. All that is in there nice and tight. Good to go. Perfect. Look at that. Now if I was being super anal, I would have put some heat shrink on this before I did this. Now that I got it, I would pull it up, heat shrink it down. I didn't think about it at the time, and I'm not going to be super anal about it because I think we're good to go there. All right. Now, next thing we're going to want to do, we've got all these damn wires to worry about. And if you remember, these are all your button wires, your signal wires, your start, your select, uh, and whatnot. 
Home is this little blue wire. That's that spare wire. These all need to get plugged into the screw terminals on your Brook Universal Fight Board. Now, with the stick open like this, this is the ideal time to do that. So, let's do it. What we're going to do is we're actually... These are actually kind of nice because with the wires all connected like this, you can stick it in this case, these wire strippers. You just put these in like this, and voila. Oh, it missed one, but it'll strip all of them at one time, and that's super fancy and super convenient. There we go. Now we got it. Look at that. Boom. Six wires stripped all at one shot. Nice. Now, this one's going to be the challenging one because this is the one where we said, hey, we don't have a line. we got to mark it with a Sharpie. I didn't have a Sharpie. I used a pen and I immediately smudged it off. So what we're going to do, oh, we're going to see if we got a Sharpie that we missed just to double check it. I think the likelihood is low. Oh, wait, wait. We do have one, but it's silver. That ain't going to help me. Uh, silver on a gray cable? What do we think? Well, I mean, it's shiny, so that I guess that may be better than nothing. Okay, cool. Not a big deal. We got this done. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to strip the wires on this just like we did the last set. Stick that in like this. Boom, like that. All six wires done. One fell shot. Voila, we're good to go. Now we're looking at this wire here, and we're looking at this wire here, and we all know that is way too much way too much wire so we're gonna end up trimming some of this off it's all good i got a trick for that let's check out the comments i like the easy mod batch for vs uh yeah these v it's not just for the vs it's gonna work on anything like the te if it's got a panel like this on it right here if it's got this panel this mod's gonna work for you it's awesome and i think i think we've got the full gamut of these sticks covered and if not i'd be very very surprised the installation i think it's gonna be a little bit different but we're we're good to go <sighs> okay Whew. what time is it it's getting late here i feel uh it's already nine o'clock at night we've been working on this for like two hours i think right i don't even know Whew. it's crazy uh, pre oh, an hour and 45 minutes. This will not take you this long. We're chatting. We're having a good time. I'm going through some tips and tricks, and I'm fighting through this fight stick. You are going to have a much easier time installing this easy mod, I promise you. Maybe not so much watching this video to figure out how to do it on your own, but it's a different story. Okay, so getting back to it. We've got uh, this all labeled, and if you remember, we made a fancy chart for these wires. So I'm just going to stick this up over here in front of my PVN like that so that I have it. Uh, and now I'm gonna grab this Brook Universal Fight Board. Boom, thank you, Brook. And we're gonna go ahead, and I shouldn't thank them, I had to buy this. <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and loosen all of these screw terminals as well. Just like I said before, you wanna watch those elevators go down. Do not assume that they are down, because when you assume they're down, they're definitely not. All right. <clears throat> All right, we're just going through, ain't no thing. Just making sure all 20 of these little screws, terminals are ready to receive wires. All right. This is the most tedious part of this mod. I hate dealing with screw terminals and most of my easy mods you don't have to, but you know, for this one, uh, like I said, I felt like uh, the cost savings was worth it in just terms of not having to deal with too many specialized connectors and whatnot on the Brook board. All right, I think that's good enough. Okay, so we're gonna start with this one. It says the red line one. If you remember, it goes red line is left one, then it goes uh, uh, X, circle, R2, L2, or ground or as we know it as triple punch, kick one, kick two, kick three, triple kick, and ground. So we're going to uh, um, go ahead and gently peel these wires apart. That's the nice thing about these little, these little guys. They're ribbon cables. They're cheaper to make, which is why I'm sure Mad Cats used them, because it makes sense. All right, and we're just gonna slowly peel these guys apart. Uh, I'm just using my fingernail. That seems to be working okay. Your mileage may vary. Uh, 
whatever works for you works for you. Sometimes I like to use my little uh, nippers like this, and what I'll do is I'll get in there, I'll separate the wires out so I don't accidentally nick any off because <clears throat> these aren't real th thick. And I'll just like create a, I'll cut it like that just to create a little start, and then that way I can just peel it. And uh, so what I did is I just kind of peeled it all to the same spot. Now here's what I'm doing. I'm going to go through. These wires are all way too long, but there's not a lot of wire here. Um, that's just the function of the way these ribbons work. They're just thin. I'm going through. I'm just twisting each wire uh, so it creates a nice little uh, straight-ish non-frayed wire thing here. And I'm twisting, 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 and we're uh, good to go there. Now what I'm going to do so I'm going to fold it in half like that, and I'm going to twist it up even more. That's going to give me a little, uh, a little bit more that I can stick into the uh, universal fight board screw terminals there. Okay. These may be a little bit too long. We'll find out. But we got a lot of room in those screw terminals. These are big screw terminals on the uh, Universal Fight Board side. Cool. Awesome. Okay, now we can go ahead and start plugging these in. All right, so we know that this uh, the red line is triple punch, right? So that's four punch. We're gonna just find that four punch onto the to the uh, brook board here, and we're gonna go ahead and go right there. I'm gonna plug that in. I'm gonna try and hold it in place with one hand. Put this brook board down and tighten that screw. Keep going until it gets tight. That's not doing anything. It's too big. Grab the right one. Jeez. There we go. Tighten that down. Tight, tight, tight. And we do the tug test, and guess what? We got it, fam. We're good to go. All right, now we're going to do that with the rest of these wires, one by one. The next one is kick one. Kick one, people. Kick one. Yeah. All right, so on the brook board it goes four punch ground and then kick one. So we're gonna put that kick one in. We're gonna hold that in place like that. And we're gonna tighten this down. Uh, this is the verses. Yes, this is the verses, but the process, it's gonna be the same for all of these. Uh, this process here is all the same for all of these fight sticks. Um, just some are a little bit easier to take uh, apart than others, so. All right, so now we've got uh, kick two, makes sense. We're gonna just plug that in here, get that into the right terminal. And uh, of course we've got a nice little working wedge, that's kind of nice. Get that in, tighten this down. Like so, cool. And then the next one should be three kick, and it is. All right, and you can see that as we start working our fancy wire that uh, our fancy little twist that we did start to just kind of come apart on us because of uh, all the movement. It, it happens. It's all right. <clears throat> all right. So there we go. We got that in for three kick. Tighten this down here. Nice. Okay. The next one's going to be four kick or kick, kick, kick. Get that plugged in. And this is where you really want to watch for those errant wires coming out of your screw terminals. You don't want to hit the four kick or the three kick button and hit all four at the same time by mistake. You know, just one little strand of wire jumping between them can do that. <sighs> all right. And then last but not least, this last wire here was ground. So that should be the common ground for all the punches and kicks. So we'll go ahead and get that lined up here. Very convenient. And this is definitely one you don't want to bridge because then your four kick will always be activated. That won't be good either.
cool. All right, so as we look, we want to make sure we got all these good. And now it's time to do a tug test and just a you know an inspection to make sure that you're not bridging any connections um, by accident. We look pretty clean across the board there, so I think uh, I'm happy with that. Um, I do have a little bit of exposed wire uh, outside the screw terminal on three or four kicks, so I'm going to go ahead and just fix that while I'm here. I don't want to take any chances because once we get this in and we stick it down with the PCB feet, it's just going to be kind of a hassle to get in there. So if you see any of these little nuisance things, just take care of it now because you don't want to deal with it later. Do it right. That's way better. Cool, cool, cool. All right. And I think, oh, see? This is why the inspection is important. I found one little wire on three kick that was going over. That's the problem with this non-solid core stuff. Um, it's real, real thin, and it's real easy to miss a single strand, so we got to fix that. All right, here we go. Get back in. Again, it's better to fix these little, little potential problems now. Save yourself hours of troubleshooting in the future, and you're like, crap, why is this doing this? You're like, oh man, it's always going to be the last thing you figure out, right? Because after that, you're not going to look for the problem anymore. But more often than not, it's just because something is touching it's not supposed to. All right, so we should be good to go there uh, with these now. Uh, I'm going to fix one more wire. See, again, being a stickler for the details is super important when you're working with electronics because uh, you just you don't want any problems. And this is a four punch. Cool. Get in there. Nice. Nice. Um, do I get a lot of requests uh, for upgrades? Well, I don't do a lot of upgrades. I normally refer those to the Mad Modders over at Arcade Shock if they're in Southern California or, you know, if they want to mail them off to Vico or Gum, I'll send them over there. I don't mind doing mods, um, uh, but, you know, kind of being in Japan and having to use USPS, it's like a, it could be like a 30-day turnaround. Um, and then the language barrier for me here in Japan can be difficult. I think there's a lot of Japanese players that want this done. And getting things shipped around Japan super fast and cheap because the country is so small. Uh, but, you know, trying to get it out there and say, hey, if you have these sticks, I can mod them for you. Um, it's, it's difficult um, just because of the language barrier. Uh, I do know a lot of people want to mod their sticks. Uh, that's the whole reason why I came up with the easy mod. You know, started off with the VLX helper widget. You know, that's what I called it initially, and then eventually it kind of morphed into the easy mod name um, because the VLX was very slow, and Hori didn't do a great job of programming that stick, and then, you know, just kind of ventured out there because, you know, the TE2s, they were failing, the TES pluses, they were failing, then all these other fight sticks came out, and they just weren't as compatible, and they weren't as fast, so a lot of people were upgrading them, and now I'm starting to kind of catch up in the backlog of older gens like the TE and, you know, hopefully the HRAP 3s and stuff like that. Um, so uh, I think we're going to see more of that, especially when PS5 rolls around, because a lot of people spend a lot of money on fight sticks in Gen 4. That's what I'm going to call this, Gen 4, PS4. Um, and they're not going to want to respend that money. So I think hopefully we can future-proof the Panzers uh, because of the close working relationship I have with Brooke, and they've taken a lot of design uh, recommendations and thoughts into designing some of their PCB products from me, uh, I'm hoping that we'll be able to just make that a seamless transition, pop one board out, pop another one in for PlayStation 5, or even maybe just an upgrade board or something. I don't know. Um, but uh, that should be pretty easy. And worst case, I designed everything in the Panzer, so I should be able to make an old adapter board pretty easy if their form factor is different. Um, but uh, I think a lot of people, you know, they were kind of, some people were let down by Gen 4 fight sticks. Um, 
and wish they could upgrade their old stuff. Uh, that's why a lot of people go through a lot of soldering and hacking and stuff like that to make their old fight sticks work with the brook boards. Um, and I'm hoping just to make that a lot easier with this system. Um, because I know a lot of people, they just want a nice, low-profile, small form factor stick. And they just got really comfortable with their old stuff and they want to just keep using it. But they don't want to have to do a bunch of conversions either with uh, converters. So um, I hope that answers your question. Uh, I've had a few requests personally to get done and I've done a few of them for friends. Uh, but not a lot in general. All right. Okay, good. So we're fortunate. This maintained the sharpie mark, so we're good to go here. Let's go ahead and, you know, before we do this, I'm going to actually trim these wires down a little bit because these are way too long. So just trim those with the flush cutters because now when I cut or pull those in half, it'll be good to go. And we're going to do the same thing we did last time. We're just going to split these wires down like this. And uh, I'm gonna have to use the nippers here. Cool. And we're just peeling these all down to a common, uh, common point like we did the last one, so they're all about the same. Cool. And even though it was a didn't really do us much good. We're going to do it again. We're going to twist all these wires, bend them in half, and make them ready for uh, install. If I was feeling crazy, not saying you should or would have to do this, I might have uh, tinned all the ends of these just to give it a little bit more meat, keep the wires all kind of together, but I don't really feel like breaking out my soldering iron. And that kind of goes against the whole idea and spirit of the easy mod. The idea is you don't have to solder. All right. I appreciate the comments on the new website. That was a hair raising experience. Um, and conveniently, uh, um, it, it was just, it was time to, it was time to do it. The old website was, uh, not good. Um, if I can make one recommendation to anybody, when it comes to doing online business, there is a lot of options and some of them are going to look really good. Uh, for example, when I first started my website, and I started selling these. Keep in mind, this was 2013, the beginning, or 2012, 2013. That's when I first made the first Panzer. So I've been doing this a long time, uh, more, you know, longer than anybody else uh, right now. I think Fohammer is probably Fohammer and Etoki may be the only two fight stick makers out there that have been doing this longer than I have. Um, everyone else has come afterwards. Uh, some people have gone away and some people have come back too, which is nice, but uh, in any case, um, I started with Xcart and I was like, cool, it's self-hosted, I can tweak it, I can get in there with the code, and uh, I hated it. It caused so many problems. It was not very compatible, didn't do a lot of things, and tweaking things took a long time. I had to take the website down. It was a nightmare. But it was like, hey, 300 bucks, you own the software, you can do whatever you want. Terrible. Then... Uh, I got annoyed, I went over to 3D Cart. Pay by the month, they take care of you, supposedly. I used them for four years. I ended up hating them. Uh, their, their software was just very crippled in many, many aspects, and there wasn't anything I could do about it, and their support wasn't super great. Now, there was a couple guys that helped me out, and it was awesome. One of them is actually in the community, and I think one, he actually has one of my fight sticks, or at least one of my panels for his uh, fight stick. But ultimately, the software was just old and outdated. Uh, but it looked good. It was super cheap. It was only like $20 a month. And I was like, okay, that's not so bad. And I eventually got annoyed with that because I have two locations now, one in Florida, one in Southern California. Managing inventory was a nightmare. I ended up spending a lot of money on redoing inventory and stuff like that just to make sure I had things in stock. And it was a nightmare. Uh, so then Shopify approached me and said, hey, try our software. And I fell in love. Uh, it's a little expensive. But you really do get what you pay for, and there's a lot of easy upgrades and stuff like that with the software 
um, in software as a service add-ons for it through other companies that make things really easy and nice. And uh, it's been kind of a night and day difference uh, operating on the new site. So uh, I like it. It was a lot of work to migrate over. Uh, I lost a lot of historical data, and, ten and that's okay. I purposely was okay with that because I, I felt that it was going to be better. But, uh, um, yeah, I uh, am very happy with it now. So thank you. I'm really glad. Uh, really glad that you guys like the, the, the new site because it was, it was a thing. <laughs> we'll just call it that. It was a thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and get these things in. Uh, conveniently, this is going to be backwards. Why wouldn't it be? All right, so... The silver wire, the silver line is the edge, and it's, I didn't have anything lined up for that, but the next one is start, so we're going to go ahead and get that one plugged in and select. So I think we can get these two wires in at the same time, because they're right next to each other. Yes, yes, all right. Let's hold them like this, and let's go ahead and screw these down. Uh, I appreciate all the support and you guys picking these up. Um, I'm really glad I was able to get these out on the market. Uh, and get them out to you guys. Uh, I think that um, if all goes well, I think these are going to ship well before the target date. Uh, so that makes me super happy. Um, yeah. All right. So now this, of course, now we got to like go backwards because it went start, select, then P1, 2, and 3. So uh, that's cool though because now they're all kind of in order. So let's uh, go ahead and just, I think we might be able to, what do you think? All three at the same time? There's no way. Maybe two. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Ah, oh, so close. Wait. Oh, cool. We got them all in. Can I keep them in just long enough to get the screws in place? Well, fingers crossed. It looks good. So far, it's looking good. I'm probably going to have to fix some of these anyway. And, oh, oh, oh. <sighs> okay, cool. Yeah, look at that. Nice. Woo! Got it. Nice. I don't know what this last wire is for. Um, it's weird. Let's see. This one. No, I'm not going to mess with it too much. Uh, I don't think I need to. Well, maybe I'll let me let me try a little bit. Uh, let's see. What's uh, what's the biggest Panzer stuff you've ever built? Well, I did make the two-player Panzer. That was like 36 inches long. I think it was huge. Um, it was basically two Panzer threes mashed together. That was kind of cool. Um, I only made like 10 or so of them. Uh, they were really big and uh, they were hard to keep on the shelf and they got damaged in shipping actually quite a lot so I had to do a lot of shipping claims with those um, that's just kind of the way it works I guess <clears throat> okay let's see here what's the chances ground well it's not a ground that's weird oh I bet you you know what I bet you that's the lock I bet that is the lock because yeah that's probably the lock one um, as a matter of fact I can test that I'll just turn this back on this last wire if it's the lock wire it will clip it'll just like I thought lock wire we don't need that one okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take this little guy here and we're gonna clip it off we don't need it all, I mean, we could have connected it to ground and just made these two exposed tabs ground, but that would have not been necessary. So, whatever. Uh, okay, now one of the other things I said is... Where is it? This is the stock... The stock JLF connector. This is garbage because it's not using the correct one. Uh, you definitely have to peel one of these out of your, your stash of wires. If you're a modder, you have a hundred of them. Let me see if I have any. Oh wait, I know where I have one. 
Look at this. There's one, but that's for that's for a optical. I don't want to use that. I'm not putting an optical stick in this. I could use that one though. Ah, another optical one. You can tell I don't build a lot of Panzers with optical. Ah, let's see. Wait, wait. Oh, another optical one. Damn it. We got this. I know I got one. Let me check the closet. You always got extras. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, so if we look here, this is the stock board, right? And let's see, how was this plugged in? Was it this way? Ugh. No, it was this way. Look at all that gross glue. Ugh. Yeah. I think this one went to the joystick. So we could figure this out. We could say, okay, well, we know this black wires down and it's up and then left and right and then ground uh, so we'll just set that aside oh okay and uh, this is probably gonna be way longer than it needs to be for this build but so I'm gonna just I guess I'll trim some of it off um, I'll trim that much off like that throw that over here I hope I didn't cut too much off because I don't know that if I have another one of these and let's go ahead and, and just go ahead and nip some of this off, like so. All right. All right, cool. We got that done. Now I do know that these are going to be too long, so let me twist these down and then trim them a little bit. That's just, that's, this is the shortest strip that the automatic strippers can get, so. Okay, and then we're just going to trim some of this wire off a little bit like that. No, oh, that may have been too much. Okay, good. All right, now we got to definitely do a little check on the old interwebs here because I always get the uh, the uh, JLF wiring backwards and it's funny everybody uses the exact same graphic and it's hilarious because not everyone uses the same graphic and I would like, one dude made it. <laughs> if I was him, I'd be like, man, you guys are all a bunch of thieves. Give me some credit at least. Um, but whatever. Okay, so let's see. Put this in. The joystick will be over here. This is a Vulix layout. Let me grab this. So it'll be like this, which means it goes like, see, it goes like this. So the top is going to be black, which is definitely ground. Uh, so it's going to be ground, then right, left, up and down. Right, left, up and down. Okay. So let's go ahead and just plug all this stuff in. Start down here with the ground. We're going to get it close to the directionals just so that all the wires are in the approximately 
the same location, if you will. So black to ground, and that's just because our JLF connector is off to the right here. And uh, if your JLF connector is in a different position, then your switches will be in a different position, and you have to, you know, go a different route. Okay, then the next one should be green, which should be right. So nice. We'll just find that. Just stick that in, and then tighten it down like so. And then your orange is up. Oh wait, hold on. I'm sorry. Left is yellow, so put that in its place. Like so. Cool. Good. And then it'll be orange for up. And we're just going to, it's convenient because this is just going straight down the brickboard. And then finally, red is down. And if we were installing an optical stick, we'd use this one, which is VCC or 5 volts and power our stick. But we're not using an optical stick, so we don't have to worry about it. But you could. You definitely could. All right, cool. So uh, we're checking this. Tight, 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 tight. Good. So we should be good to go there. All right. Now, here's the, the next kicker. We're still one wire short, and that is going to be our home button. Hello, Pass Blaster. Hello, Raul. And by Pass Blaster, I mean uh, Adam. Okay, so here was the question was in the chat. Uh, what was wrong with the stock connector? Well, here's the problem with it. It's not the right connector, people. Mad Cats didn't do a good job on this. They used a JLF, uh, sorry, no, 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 no. A JST PH connector. It happens to be the same pitch, um, but it's meant to go into a connector like this, where there's little clips and it clucks into place. Well, guess what? Your JLF doesn't have clips. It's got it's got this little nub thing here that requires a tab, which where to go? Here it is. This thing has. This is an SHF connector. This is the proper cable you use with your JLF, not this. So we're replacing it. And that's just a personal thing. You don't have to. You could make it work, but I'm not one to just make things work if I can fix it the right way. That's just me. Okay, now uh, the other thing, this blue cable here that's coming from the Easy Mod. Uh, this is your PlayStation home button, or your home button rather. So we need to actually plug that into the brookboard down here. So we got to find that PS Xbox button, and we're gonna go yoink. Actually, I'm gonna come in from the bottom just so I can have a cleaner install. Plug that in. Whoops. Get that lined up, plug that in, grab my, there we go, my screwdriver. Oh, that's not the right one. Where'd it go? Ah, here it goes. And uh, tighten that down. There we go. Perfect. Dunzo. All right, so cool. Now we got all the wires in place. This one here, remember that's that ground, that kill ground that is for the stock board. I'm cutting that loose. We're not using it. We've got our own kill ground. <clears throat> on the board here so we're good to go all right so we should be AJ squared away now we got all the wires hooked up and we should be ready to put this thing back together so to do that we're gonna just go ahead and <clears throat> clean out some of this dirt and skin and crap that was left in it from the previous Japanese guy that owned this thing try and get as much of it out as possible uh, without grabbing a can of canned air or my super blower because uh, it's late my wife is in bed <laughs> I don't want to wake her up um, and I may just come back later and clean this up a little bit more uh, I don't know I'll probably not but I like to think I will uh, so that's okay we got all this uh, plugged in now and we should be able to start putting this thing back together so what we're gonna do we're gonna grab the insert and get this in place that looks like it's about right. Yep. All right, and we're gonna start putting these screws back in. Um, uh, question: Do you think? Uh, question from YouTube: Do you think uh, the Brook UFB will support the PlayStation Five or not? I hope it does. Actually, to be honest with you, I just hope the PlayStation Five is backwards compatible with PlayStation Four accessories. This whole thing that they've got going, 
on USB makes me think that they're just being jerks about it to keep manufacturers in business. And by manufacturers, I mean peripheral manufacturers so they can just keep selling uh, licensing, and I hate that. We're not dealing with proprietary connectors anymore or special protocols. And now, these consoles, they're basically PCs. So making a single, making it just work with any USB fight stick or a case stick should be just a thing. So it's frustrating to me. And that's a small rant. But anyways. I think Brooke will try and do the right thing. And make it work. I don't. I can't guarantee it, but I like to think they're gonna try and do the right thing and make it work. If not, then I think that just make, that that would be very telling as well. Okay. So now, as I'm putting this back together, I'm re I'm remembering that this is very clear. It's like a translucent plastic. So that explains why. <laughs> they had that black cover thing on the wires, so you couldn't see them. But, oh, that's not the right screw. This was the screw that I fucked up earlier. I mean, I screwed up earlier. I was trying to keep this a safer work uh, stream, and I almost made it. Almost made it. <clears throat> okay, if you guys are modders and you don't have one of these little electric screwdrivers, you need to get one. They're super convenient, and they're not very expensive. I think I paid 2,500 yen for this, which is like 25 bucks. Maybe 3,000 yen, and it was like 26 bucks, I forget. Um, it's very convenient. It saves a lot of time. It's definitely better than this. And when it when it dies, it works like a regular screwdriver, so that's kind of nice. <clears throat> okay, so we got this all back in, so that's good. And what are these? Oh, the yeah. Hey, cool. I think we're not gonna have we're gonna have one leftover screw, but we planned on that, so that's good. All right, so let's go ahead and. Clean this up a little bit again. All right, so, yep, we still have a lot of working area down here, so that's good. Um, we got a lot of wires here, so I wonder if we can try and clean these up a little bit. Pull this out. Oh, my gosh, there's so many wires everywhere. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. What are we doing here? We need to keep these wires and these wires separate so that we can keep them all clean. All right. What a nightmare. It's like a spaghetti monster. There we go. There we go. Perfect. All right. So we got brown, I'm sorry, black, and then we got red. These are going to be all our punch buttons. I'm going to try and create one little harness here. Red. Then green. Ugh. Come on. I'm just trying to get these wires cleaned up a little bit so that, uh, you know, we have, like, where I'm not, I know I'm not going to have access uh, later. Uh, link for the screwdriver. Um, I bought it at my local shop here in Japan. <laughs> uh, I can get you one if you want. <laughs> um, 
It's just a department store. Uh, and it's not a fancy brand name or anything like that. It's just generic screwdriver or something, I guess. But All right, so what I'm doing here is uh, I'm actually just kind of zip tying the the like wires together. And by like, I mean like these are the punching punch wires. And I'm not going to zip tie this crazy long thing. I'm just going to get uh, a couple here like this so that it's nice and clean and tight. All right, now we're going to do the same thing here for the kicks. And the kicks are going to be your brown, orange, purple, and blue. So we got brown, orange, purple, and blue. Okay. And... Uh, so there's that. We're just gonna kind of marry these wires all up together into a nice little thing as well. I wish I could uh, give you a link to this screwdriver because it actually comes with like six, five or six of these, um, and it's got like a where is it? It's got like a nice little locking collar, like quick disconnect type collar. Um, so it's very convenient. And it's a, it's a decent build quality, too. All right. Cool. All right, so now we've got that. So, you know, one of the things that we can do while we're doing these mods and these upgrades is just cleaning things up. You know, things that, you know, it's, it's easy to do when we're working on them one at a time. Very difficult to do when you're mass producing sticks because you're just like hey i need to get these done i need to get them out the door no one's really going to look inside and care well we look inside we care because we're the modding community that's what we do um but uh <clears throat> yeah so might as well make it look good the best we can oh this this yellow wire is so sad it's so short fortunately it's for punch four so it's at the very end of the line but oof, yikes all right um, so look at that. We've got that wire nice and clean over there, so that's good. We can set this down here. Uh, we know these wires all look, well, they look about what they look like, but we can uh, get a couple zip ties on that JLF because that's that JLF connector because it's uh, pretty much done. We don't have to worry about this. It's not going to... We're going to start here because I want it to look nice where I can see it. And I can tuck any excess back um, down down towards the board uh, because hopefully if we get this installed where I think we're going to install it, you're not going to see that anyways. All right, cool. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Awesome. So that looks pretty clean. Yeah, I think that's pretty clean. Um, now we're starting to look here at these connectors. Um, we're going to start wanting to plug these in. So this goes in the middle, this black and white one. This, remember, this is the touchpad button. Uh, this one here with the multicolor, the red, orange, yellow, green, and blue, that's the, the player LEDs. We plug that in there. And then last but not least, this button, this wire connector here, this is your left stick, right stick DP mode. So we're going to just plug that in to this Molex connector here like so and get that to click into place. And voila, now we've got all these plugged in. We can finish. See, now I'm starting to think, oh, maybe we should have put some of these wires back up in here. But we can, we can still make this work. We got this. Where's my zip ties? Ah, oh, there they are. I really kind of missed the mark, I think, making this video. I should have had some cameras set up to make some B-roll footage so I could piece together a, a proper DI, you know, tutorial instead of just this long-ass live stream. I, see, I did it again. This long live stream to watch uh, the how you install all this stuff when you do this. But you know, we got to get the we got to get to the path of least resistance, if you will, to make these things and. This was uh, the path that was the least resistance. So, all right, we're going to 
come back here. We're going to tuck these wires like this. Let's see if we can't uh, start making a nice neat wire bundle out of it. Something like this. Cool. We're going to have a little bit of slack that we're going to have to deal with, but it ain't no thing. Remember, when I designed this, I designed it to work with all of these fight sticks, and the Versus was the biggest, so we kind of had to make sure we had plenty of room for the, the wiring for this guy. Uh, so your mileage and your, your wire bundling situation is going to be probably a little bit different, and that's all good. It's all good. You just got to make it fit and work with what you're working with. Um... Okay, question out there from uh, uh, YouTube. Am I going to do another super gun? Yes. When? I don't know. All right. Cool. So now we should have that all good to go. And then this should be like this. Probably going to have to deal with this wiring. Uh, after we get this all in place. Uh, and the other wire we haven't installed yet is this USB one. And that's a simple connection because we've got to figure out where we're going to put that little USB adapter board. All right, so we don't need this little guy anymore. Let's go ahead and uh, push our wiring bundles down because now what we want to do is we definitely want to uh, get the bottom panel back on. Here we go. This one. Ooh, that looks pretty good. And now we can just go ahead and, uh, oh, that's the top screws. Screw these into place. Ooh. Don't want to cross thread anything, that'd be bad. Void if remove stickers. Get the feet back in. Done. All right, cool. Now the rest of these are just for putting the top panel back on. So let's move this stuff out the way. Uh, flip this guy over. This is the first time we're looking at it after we've installed all this stuff. It looks pretty good, pretty clean. We got uh, our old JLF wire here. We got all these button wires that are in the way here. So we're gonna have to deal with that. All right. Now we're gonna have a couple things we got to mount. First is uh, this USB cable guy. Let's plug our USB cable in, nice little JST connection here, boom, like so, if I can get it in, there we go, voila, and <clears throat> where's our feet, where's our sticky feet, here we go, we're going to use two, we're going to go ahead and plug one up in here like so, just push real hard, make it go through, nice, and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side, just kind of offset, like this. You can't really get four in, but that's fine. We're not trying for four. Let's go ahead and just get this out the way. Now this is going to be this is going to be interesting because this is kind of dictates where your board's going to go because uh, you got to plug this in. So the idea is we want this up like this. We want to try and tuck these under like that. And we put this guy like so. Oh look at that! Ooh, can we go from behind? Nice. Like that. Cool. And then we can <clears throat> see about where we're going to mount all this stuff. The thing is, we got to keep this area open because this is where our, our joystick's going to be. So we got to find the right spot to stick the brook board. Um, 
usually this is the hardest part is where we're going to stick these things. All right. So we could do report there. That's probably not going to be a good spot for it though. If we pull this up, let's see. Pull this out like that. Might be able to tuck it right there. Right behind that. That may actually work. And all this extra wine can come up there. Let's see. What do we think? Because we can actually have some of this wire just kind of sit on top of the brook board. It's not a huge deal. And we got lots of room in here to kind of tuck these wires. And you'll see them maybe from the side, but who cares? Okay, good. So that's kind of where we want it to sit. And so let's go ahead and we're going to tack our brook board down first. So I'm just grabbing my PCB feet here. Hello, Marcio Kazuma. Hello, hello. Uh, Cybercracking, any plans for custom panels for the VS stick? Uh, I don't know. Uh, this is why I don't know. There's a lot of plastic here. Uh, you can't trim this and you really can't trim this because this gets in the way. So I don't know that this would be super conducive to like a Vulex or a hitbox layout maybe, but I'm not sure. <clears throat> All right. This is like the most precarious part of this whole install because getting this brook board kind of situated where I wanted it was uh, not as easy as I thought. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the USB cable from the little helper board to give myself some working room. I'm going to go ahead and put these PCB feet in. These are low profile feet, which is good. We want to keep, keep this as low to the, the ground as possible in the fight stick. We're just going to mash these guys in. The whole idea is we don't want this sitting on that metal panel because all these exposed solder points. All right, now we peel these little sticker pads off expose the 3M sticker. I don't know, it could be fake. All right, push this up out the way. All right, now, uh, now we just try and mash this in and get it right without uh, the feet sticking <laughs> prematurely. Okay, because that was not what we want. Alright, so we want to get this as close to the side as possible. There we go. Now a little pressure to get the, the feet stuck without pushing down on a frickin' pin for crying out loud. Okay, what am I hung up on? Looks like I may. Looks like I uh, went a little too far over. Okay. Okay.
Okay, it looks like this wire was underneath one of the PCB feet, so it was not wanting to stick. So we'll just get that out of the way. Then we should be able to slide all the way over, taking care to lift the wires up and out of the way. So the USB plug is causing a bit of a trifle with this. So maybe we uh, come this way and go down like this. Get the brickboard situated horizontally. Get the PCB feet stuck down and uh, hopefully Let's check, take our JLF. Oh yeah, our JLF is totally clear. It's sitting right above the, B, the PCB. All right, cool. That was what I was worried about. I didn't want the JLF hitting the top of the, the circuit board. And uh, it doesn't, so that's good. So now we just wrestle with this a little bit to get it clear so that everything, the PCB feet stick down, which they now do, so we're good there. Cool, we got the USB cable coming off it like this, which is good, because now we've got a, this is gonna be good, because now the JLF is real close. We've got the wires kinda tucked up into this nook pretty well. They're all still plugged in, that's good. And then we can plug our USB little adapter guy back in, like so. All right. And uh, the other thing, well, you know what we should have done. Ah. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to take these gray wires. We are going to take them like this. We're going to just tuck them back. Actually, we're going to do something more than just tuck them back. We're going to zip tie them so they're nice and tight. Where's my zip ties? Oh, here we go. Take out some of the extra slack and bundle them up nice like that. Clip. And then we can kind of tuck this back across the top of the brook board like so. And then now we can take this guy, plug it back in for the 400th time. Peel this feet like so, and then just go ahead and stick it down like this, because all we're doing is making sure that this has uh, got a good connection and it's not going to get in the way. And that's a pretty good spot for it. Okay, and you can use like the PCB feet nub and then the USB jack and like this extra, the four pin header there to just kind of route the cable and keep it in place. And now the only thing we have left is to hook up our JLF and our buttons. So hoo ya, hoo ya, hoo ya. Look at that, that's killer. And we got so much room. Uh, so now we can, I mean, we, we're probably gonna be able to clean up a lot of these wires, so this is awesome. This part of the stick is done. Now this is technically, technically, easy modded and it only took where's the time two hours and 40 minutes what did we do for the last three hours people oh my god i probably did too much of this and not enough of this that's all good uh okay so i promise you when you do this if you're devoted and you're focused you're not paying attention you're not trying to figure things out super easy will not take you this long um if it does take you this long well then you're slow like i am and that's okay there's nothing wrong with that um, okay, so before we move on, like I said, we're going to upgrade uh, uh, the panel. And by upgrade the panel, I mean we're going to put a new lever on it, and we're going to put new buttons in it. So oh, for this, this is kind of beyond the scope of the easy mod. Uh, 
but you guys can stick around. I know you want to. Let me see. Ah, cool. Is this the right size? Oh, heck yeah. Awesome. Where'd my screwdriver go? Alright. Uh, so, we're gonna go ahead and just, uh... Oops. Apparently I'm gonna kill the battery. Cool. So, that was just me disconnecting the, uh, the ball top from the JLF. I'm gonna set that off to the side. Got that. All right. Now we're gonna go ahead and take all these Sanwa buttons out. I bet you every tab breaks because that's what happens. Hey, they didn't. Cool. That those did. That definitely did. <laughs> Whoops. These are old buttons. I'm just gonna toss these in the trash anyway. The whole idea of rehabbing buttons is, unless they're like a color that they don't make anymore. It's not worth it, I don't think. Um, that's just my two cents. I'm kind of, I don't want to say I'm lazy, but it's just, I got better things to spend my time on. I don't, I'll spend three dollars on a new button. Just pick it up at arcadeshock.com and, you know, they'll ship it out to me in the next day and, well, here it'll take like 15 days to arrive, but that's courtesy of the military mail system. But for you guys, it'll show up nice and fast. Alright, cool. <clears throat> so that's all done. And then, of course, if I want Sam Ducks of buttons, I'm just going to pull them off my shelf and order them from my site. Uh, because, yeah, makes sense. Alright. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and take this JLF out. We're going to save these screws because we need to reuse them. And this is disgusting. We're going to set that off there, and maybe I'll clean that later. I don't know, but ugh, gross. It's so nasty. All right. Let me grab a dust washer here. Throw that on first. I'm going to go ahead and plop that down like so. And I'm going to screw it back into its place because that's what we got to do. I'm going to get it tight, but I'm not going to tighten it all the way because I'm going to have to go back. I'm going to have to make sure that I've got this centered on the plate and through the hole before I uh, go too crazy. All right, there we go. And I'm going to be very disappointed if I have a problem getting the Sam Ducks a button in here. Because I don't have Sanwa. Enough Sanwa. And I really like the Sam Ducks of Buttons. I'm really going through and replacing all of mine with them. Um, so, ooh, nice clicky sound. I love it. All right. Where's my... There's my ball top. Where's my shaft cover at? Ugh. This is the shaft cover that was on here. I'm going to clean it because I need to reuse it. I, apparently I didn't grab a shaft cover. Oh, this is disgusting. There's so much grease and dirt and grossness on it. Yeah, I do take my time on these things. Uh, I, I want to do... I want to do it right. Um, and honestly, if the stream goes long or these takes time, you know, again, I'd just rather do it right than fast because usually... You know, if you do something fast and you miss something, then you just got to rework everything. And the other thing is, I'm going through and I'm trying to explain everything as we go, so that uh, you know, if someone gets stumped on something or they have a question as they rewatch this in the future, they're like, oh, if I watch a little, maybe just watch a little bit longer, uh, he'll he'll encounter the problem. Yep, and normally I do. All right, cool. So that's good. So now we got the we we took our SH silent stick and we made it loud, and that's all good. All right, now let's go ahead and get these Sam Ducks of buttons in. I'm gonna leave the uh, little protective film 
on the button until we get them all installed. And I'm going to start with this kick button because I have a feeling this is not going to work because it's... God dang it. I'm going to make it work though, damn it. I'm going to tear the nut up doing it, but I don't care. Got it. <laughs> nice. It's not exactly in the best orientation, but I made it work. So now let's just do that seven more times with a little less frustration, I think. <sighs> All right. I hate the Vuelix layout. I really do. It makes some of this stuff way too complicated. Cool. These go in a lot easier. I like screwing buttons. They just make me happy. Hey, my phone's telling me I need to go to bed. start hooking everything back up. Well, finishing hooking everything back up. All right. Cool. Let's take a look. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Look at those sweet stickers. All right. Let's go ahead and set that off here. Keep that out the way. All right. Now we're going to start making connections, people. Mmm. Look at that. Now we've got the right connector. See how it just clips into place? It's brilliant. Mm. All right. So I think, damn it, I need my, my cheat sheet. <clears throat> All right. Punch one is black. All right, so this is the kick bundle here. I guess we'll hook up the kick bundle first. All right, so we need the brown first. All yeah, right. All right, brown, and then orange. Oh, these are terrible. So over time, these, uh, it looks like these quick disconnects kind of fail, not fail, but they get loose. So I have a feeling that uh, I need to do some uh, crimp, not crimping, but some squeezing, if you will, of the quick disconnects so they don't accidentally come off during reassembly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my needle nose and just kind of do the squeeze on them. Again, one of the problems with these old fight sticks is at some point you end up having to rework a lot of stuff and uh, just to keep them healthy. And I like old cars. All right, so that's all good. Um, let's go ahead and get some more uh, zips here so we can keep these wires clean now that we've got them all plugged in and we know we have plenty of room. All right, here we go. Cool. That looks pretty good. Clean the excess up, like so. Good to go. Now we can get the panel in a little bit closer and get our punch buttons in. So we got black, red, green, and then yellow. Black. And we got the green. Then red. but not least yellow 
You can definitely tell some of these, these PVC boots have seen much better days as well. I don't know what the previous owner did with this, but he had a time, didn't he? All right, and I'm just going through. I'm trying to squeeze these down back onto the tab. Oops. All right, cool. And that little boot that I pushed back up, well, we'll just say that that one is not in the right spot. That one was supposed to be down on the uh, terminal block that these were all plugged into. Apparently it went rogue and I didn't catch it. So it's now not in its home. It's not in its home. All right, sorry about that. All right, cool. And one more, maybe two more. And, all right, snap these off. I think that uh, that's probably going to be okay. So there we go. We got that done. Let's go ahead and uh, put this back down. I don't feel any rubbing. And all the buttons work. Well, they all press down at least. So there you go. That's the easy mod. Two hours and 45 minutes later. I know you guys liked it. I hope it was good for you because it was definitely good for me. I think uh, a couple things I'm going to do is I'm going to get some Novus polish and maybe try and de-scratch some of the uh, the uh, plastic on this case. Um, and then uh, I also think that uh, I'm going to replace this hardware because, well, maybe not replace it, just uh, get some polishing compound and maybe a polishing wheel and then uh, um, clean them up a little bit, make them shiny. Why not? Just to give the whole stick a kind of a, a nice once over, if you will. Um, seems like such a waste to put you know, a new circuit board inside and all the time and effort to just uh, leave some of the, the details kind of lackluster. So let's go ahead and do one last quick, quick uh, spray clean on this and call it a night. Whew. All right. Cause uh, this was, this was exhausting. And it was just, you know, when you work a 14 hour day and then you come home and work on a fight stick for three hours, trying to be detailed as you go, I guess uh, that happens. But um, we're going to clean this up, and then we're going to kind of go through the rough details, just to recap, if you will, what we did, and some tips and tricks for uh, you when you want to install this in your fight stick versus SH, or your versus Street Fighter Cross Tekken, or your TE, or your TE minus S, or TES, whatever, with thin bezels and fat bezels and no sides or whatever all the different variants but uh we got to do the peel first nope that's not a good peel there we go that's a good peel whoops that wasn't a good peel oh man bad peel yikes there we go cool that looks really good. That came out really, really nice. And it'll be good because now we know that all of the buttons and stuff that uh, we're using are new. We got the mechanicals. I got my clicky lever back, and I'm, I'm super happy with that. And now I know that this Fight Stick's gonna work on PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox 360, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, PC, Android, Wii, Wii? We, uh, no, not we. Uh, just, you know, everything that we're going to want to throw this fight stick at, we got this covered. We got eight brand new Sam Duxa buttons. We got that JLF on two new OBSF 24s along the side. We got the Brook Universal Fight Board inside with the TE Easy Mod made by yours truly with, uh, actually, see me, 
made by the real Phoenix and modified by me uh, to bring it into the Easy Mod lineup. Uh, super quick, uh, generally, to install. Um, this fight stick had its own little bit of challenges associated with it because we had to take so much of it apart to get to everything. Uh, but at the end of the day, when you're kind of looking at it, even though the plastic is a little translucent in some places, you're not seeing any of the wiring on the inside and it just looks really clean overall. Uh, so to recap what we did, we took the top panel off and disconnected all the buttons. But before we did that, we labeled on this uh, envelope here the colors of everything. We started here. We knew that start was gray and select was white. We wrote all that down so that, that later when we reassembled everything we didn't have to do any guesswork. Uh, from there we went ahead and set that aside and we flipped the fight stick over. We took the bottom panel off and the bottom plastic insert out uh, and then started getting to the housing. This PCB is underneath the USB door. On some of the other fight sticks like uh, this one it'll just lift out because uh, you can get to the screws from the top, so it'll be a little bit easier, a little bit faster than the TEs, not necessarily the Versus series like uh, we did this uh, mod on tonight. Uh, so we lifted the cable door out, and we took out the screws, got this out, um, which was the stock board here. Once we got the stock board out, we uh, gently removed the dome switches and transplanted them over to the Easy Mod board. Again, because this has the LEDs up here, we used the bottom sets of uh, the bottom sets of contacts on this side when we aligned that dome switch. Then we went ahead and re we took that PCB out and we put the Easy Mod PCB in with those dome switches, lined it up, and then we cut the jumper for this fight stick. Uh, since we're installing it in this Versus that has these player indicators up here above the PlayStation button, we ended up cutting uh, jumper SJ3, and now these will be the LEDs for the players um, when we use it. If we would have cut jumper SJ2, these would have been the player LEDs. This just made more sense. Uh, from there, we went ahead and connected all the wires to the back of the Easy Mod board. We wanted to make sure that our turbo button acted as our touchpad click, so we made sure we used the correct wire. That's the connector that has two wires, the white and black. Remember here, we wanted to use the ones uh, where white and black were right next to each other uh, at this side, and then we plugged the ones the other end where the white and black was separated by two positions into the brook board at the touchpad connector socket. Um, if you wanted to use this as a turbo then you use that other wire that's not used, uh, this red, green, and black and white one, and that'll make one of these lights as the turbo light and this is the turbo switch. If you want to use it for those type of games and you don't care about the touchpad. Um, from there we used the lock switch uh, jumper cable, the two black wires and connected them up to our start and select. So now this lock switch controls these as well as everything up here. Cool. Uh, and then from there we just started kind of cleaning up the wires and putting them in place and then putting everything back together. What we did do in this case is we hooked up everything to the brook board uh, before we flipped the fight stick over because it was just easier to work that way. Uh, one thing that I will take note of and that you should take note of when you're doing this is those grave ribbon cables coming off of the terminal block that goes to uh, that originally went to the stock board when we clipped those off I labeled what all of those were and you can pull them off of the board here because it's labeled here uh, write it down make note of it so it makes hooking it up to the blue terminal strips on the universal fight board much easier later uh, from there we went ahead and clipped those stripped them and we plugged them into the blue terminal blocks and then we made up all the connections from the easy mod that's under here to the brook board Flip the fight stick over after we go ahead and reinstall the bottom panel and then we applied the uh, sticky feet to the USB adapter and the brick board and placed them where they did not interfere with the JLF or the buttons. Very cool. Uh, and from there, you know, it was just kind of working backwards, putting the buttons in. In our case, we did replace the buttons in the JLF, reconnecting everything, zip tying things up to make sure it looks nice and neat. Uh, there is some extra bulk in here, and we wanted to make sure the wires were long enough to give you options on where you wanted to install the brook board in your fight stick, because we all do things a little bit differently. Uh, 
from there, we just went ahead and buttoned everything up and we were done. Overall, I think this is going to be about a 35 to 45 minute mod. It took us almost three hours because we had a lot of conversations through this video and I did it very slow uh, to make sure everyone understood every step along the way. And we had some good conversations too, so I appreciate that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'm glad you guys tuned in for the stream. Uh, we are going to archive this or maybe you're watching it on the archive now. And if you are, definitely hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you can follow me. Uh, definitely helps me out and appreciate it uh, because it lets you know every time we post a new video, uh, whether that's a live stream or a pre-recorded. Because we've got a couple pre-recorded coming up uh, here shortly as well. Um, Make sure you follow us on Twitter, Jason's Customs. It's at Jason's Customs on Twitter. Jason's Customs on Facebook is facebook.com slash Jason Customs. And we have Instagram, instagram.com slash Jason's Customs. It's pretty easy. Uh, we post a lot of stuff up there, and uh, you can find all the cool stuff we're working on there. Uh, we do have a newsletter. I do randomly send those things out for new products, uh, newsletters out for new products and announcements, like when the website's going to be down for maintenance, etc. And uh, I definitely encourage you to look at that too, because I'm going to start throwing coupon codes in there as well. If you own a Panzer Fight Stick, I definitely appreciate that. We've been making them since 2012, and uh, uh, I know you got a lot of options out there now, but I think when you compare apples to apples, the Panzer is still the king of the metal fight stick world. So I appreciate your guys' uh, support there as well. You can pick up this easy mod if you're interested right on my website. We sell it without the brookboard and we sell it with the brookboard. And of course, if you buy it with the brookboard and the PCB feet, you get everything you need and you're going to save a lot of money that way. So that's the kit that I would go for. And if you already have a brookboard, then you can pick up the easy mod by itself and go it alone. Easy day. Uh, I think that's all we got for today. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Let me check the Twitch chat real quick. Uh, no questions there, just good comments. So thank you everyone for tuning in. I know this is long. Uh, for you, it's in the morning. For me, it is now 10.15 at night, 10.30 at night. I don't even know. 10.15 at night. So it is time for me to go to bed. Uh, I'll probably have to just test the stick out tomorrow. I'm pretty sure it's going to be fine. Uh, actually, I know it's going to be fine. Uh, but it's always a good thing to test everything before you button it up unlike me, just to make sure that you don't have to undo a bunch of screws and stuff to fix things if you find a problem. So until next time, I'm Jason. Thanks for tuning in, and I'm out. Peace. Uh, the easy mod for the TE2 Plus is never going to have a touchpad sensor. No, because the Brookboard doesn't actually support touchpad tracking. But thank you for asking the question.